my mom, 39F, lied to me, 17M, and my real dad, late 30s? M, just showed up for the first time. Sorry if this is incoherent but my mind is racing right now. My dad died when I was 8 years old. Well the man I thought was my dad did. My mom dated other men but she's never remarried or had a serious live-in boyfriend since so I've basically been without a dad since I was 8. But earlier today this man came into my work. I work at a movie theater in the concession stand BTW. So this man came in and kept letting people go ahead of him in line until I was done helping the customer I was with. I didn't think anything at first but this guy was kinda nervous but trying to talk to me. He asked what I recommended to eat and asked what kind of movies I liked. He seemed friendly but shy and I was just being polite and making conversation like we're supposed to do with customers. Anyway he paid and left and I didn't see him when his movie finished cause it was busy. Or maybe he didn't even watch a movie. Ike. Anyway I got off work a little bit ago and when I got home that same man was in my living room talking to my mom and it kinda creeped me out and my mom started panicking when I asked who he was. And she just kept saying he's no one he's leaving. But the man said he wasn't leaving until we talked and said she needs to tell me the truth. Well you can guess from the title, he said he's my dad. I just felt this twist in my stomach. My mom started rambling saying my dad that died was my real dad and how much he loved me and took care of me and that this doesn't change that. The thing is something happened last year that made me question my mom about my dad and my medical history. She said she didn't know anything about it but today I just yelled at her that she could have told me then and there that he wasn't my biological father but she didn't. I asked if this man was telling the truth and she just started crying and nodding. I guess I didn't notice at the theater because it was never something I would even think of but looking at him it's pretty clear we're related since he looks so much like me. Or I guess I look like him is more accurate. He tried to talk to me and swore he never knew I existed or he would have been in my life. My mom didn't deny any of this. I asked her if this man was dangerous or an abusive ex or something. He was offended and she assured me it wasn't that at all. She wanted to sit down and talk but I just felt so nauseous and overwhelmed so I just grabbed my keys and told my mom I was staying at my best friend Josh's house for the night. I came here and Josh was sympathetic and let me vent but he fell asleep and now I'm just here awake and my brain won't shut off. I feel so betrayed by my mom. How could she not tell me the truth? When I was little I understand but I'm old enough to know where I come from. It feels so unfair that she denied me a father for half my life. I loved my dad that died. And I still miss him but I've wanted a father for so long. There's so much I've gone through where I feel like having a dad would have been so much better and easier. I love my mom and she's been incredible in raising me but it's not the same as having a dad. Especially when this guy is my actual dad and it seems like he would have been there if he knew. I'd quote to say to him. Or to my mom. I know I have to go home eventually but I just don't know what I'm supposed to say or do. He probably hates me and thinks I'm a crybaby because I cried and stormed out. I feel lost. Update 1, I know I didn't reply to any comments after the first few hours that my original post was up. I woke up the next morning and saw a bunch of new comments. Though I didn't reply I did read all of them, good and bad. I appreciate all the advice given and kind words spoken. But like many people suggested, the only thing I could really do was talk to both of them to figure out what the real story was. So I went home and talked to my mom. I was much calmer with a clearer head and was ready to hear what she had to say. I probably learned more than anyone should ever have to about their own conception. Turns out my father really isn't an abusive ex, my mom didn't cheat on my adoptive dad or anything shady like that. I'm just the product of a one night stand. My mom said she went out drinking by herself at a bar and met my dad who was celebrating his 25th birthday alone. She said she had just been dumped by her fiance, not my adoptive dad, different man, a week before that because she had learned from her doctor that it was virtually impossible for her to have children naturally. She said her and my dad used a condom and yet somehow she still got pregnant with me and I'm her miracle baby considering the circumstances. She went back to the hotel that he took her to after she found out she was pregnant but they couldn't find any info on my dad ever staying there. He didn't give her his actual first name. Explained in more detail later in post, she said this was before social media was a thing so she couldn't just search him online like we can do nowadays. So she decided she would just raise me on her own. She also admitted she panicked when my bio dad showed up because to her he was literally just a guy she knew for one night 17 years ago. She didn't really know who he was now or if he was going to try to get custody of me or if I was gonna want to run away with him or something. She admits she could have been calmer from the beginning and maybe we could have all talked and sorted it out that night but I don't blame her for it. As for my adoptive dad, the man that raised me, she said she didn't meet him until I was almost two. They got married when I was three. He officially adopted me after they got married. She showed me the adoption certificate. Reflecting on it now I realize I've never seen pictures of he and I when I was a baby. Just pictures of me as a toddler and up. She said he accepted me as his own and loved me and being a father to me. I told her my bio dad showing up doesn't rewrite history. I'll never not see my adoptive dad as my father. If anything it makes me love him even more that he treated and loved me as his own flesh and blood. I also ended up talking to my dad. 
he left his number which my mom gave to me. We met up for lunch. He confirmed my mom's whole story. I gave him shit about using a fake name. It wasn't so cut and dry. He said he goes by his middle name which is what he told her that night. He showed me his business card which does have the name he told my mom that night. And I've since looked him up, using the name he gave my mom which nowadays he's very easy to find with it, and his entire online presence uses his middle name. He has comments on his Facebook from friends and family calling him that name going back years. Apparently he only goes by his actual first name for legal and business reasons, like checking into a hotel. He said that night he was depressed that his best friend didn't live to celebrate their 25th birthday together, they had the same birthday, and that's why he drove to our town to get away from everyone and everything back home for a night. He apologized a million times and said he would have been in my life if he had known, especially because I inherited a medical condition from him and it really sucked dealing with that and having to learn to adjust to it alone. He was diagnosed with it when he was 19 so he knew what I went through. I could tell he genuinely felt awful about it. I asked him how he even found out about me and apparently he has a son who is only 5 months younger than me. So his ex-wife, son's mom, is a teacher and she saw a picture that my school's website posted of the academic team I'm on. She had sent it to my dad thinking I might be related to him cause we look so alike. He said he has a brother he hasn't spoken to in over 20 years so they both initially thought I could be his nephew but he found my Instagram, which is public, and he said when he saw a picture of me and my mom on it he instantly recognized her and he knew I was his. And I know people will ask but no he did not cheat on his ex-wife with my mom. He didn't meet her until a couple months after the night with my mom. He even admitted they only got married because she got pregnant early in the relationship and they're divorced now because they're not actually compatible. He offered proof and to even call her himself right there to confirm but I told him it wasn't necessary. He had visited my mom earlier the day that he visited me at work and confirmed with her even though he already knew between my face and the math lining up. But he said he went to the theater anyway because even though he had seen pictures of me he said he had to see me for himself in person. He said we still need to do a DNA test to establish paternity and so he can add me on his insurance. But between our faces, my birth date, and us having the same rare medical condition it's obvious he's my dad. Even the waitress made a nonchalant comment about us being father and son. He asked if we could start having visits to get to know each other and of course I said yes. I want to know him. Even though I still feel some anger at him, and I don't really even know why exactly tbh, I want to have him in my life. My mom said I can't go to his house for Christmas or even at all, he lives an hour away, until she feels comfortable with me leaving to visit him. But she said he can come visit on Christmas night and we'd go from there. At the end of lunch I brought out my debit card to pay my half of the meal. I didn't really know what the etiquette is for a first lunch with a bio parent as a teenager. He just laughed and said I'm his son and I don't ever have to pay for anything when I'm with him. I'd cry but that made me feel really good. And then he made a joke about owing my mom 17 years of child support anyway which really just eased the whole situation. He walked with me to my car and gave me a hug which made me start crying. I know it's cringy and I was embarrassed that I was crying in the middle of a diner parking lot but I just felt an instant connection to him when he hugged me even though he's still basically a stranger to me. He said some stuff to me while he was hugging me and just let me cry for a couple mins. It's still early I know but I can just tell he's a good man. Regardless of who he was when he met my mom and whatever happened that night. I mean he sought me out after learning about me so that has to count for something right? He could have pretended he never saw my Instagram. Or even after talking to my mom and her sending him away. Or after meeting me at the movie theater. Or after I stormed out when he came to talk that same night. He had so many chances to walk away but he didn't give up. That shows me that he really does want to have a relationship with me. Anyway, now my issue is scrambling to find him a last minute Christmas present. I have no idea what to get him. He's a lawyer so from what I could tell from googling him and the address he gave me, he's rich. He probably has everything he already wants. If anyone has any ideas what a man in his early 40s would want or be able to make use of as a Christmas gift I'd love some suggestions. Update 2, hi everyone. I wasn't really planning on posting another update but people have asked and messaged me wanting to know what happened on Christmas. I'll try to keep this one briefer than my last post. In short, it was the best Christmas I've had in years. And I just want to thank this sub for the advice on the photo album gift. It was honestly the perfect gift. So my dad ended up FaceTiming me on Christmas morning while he was at his parents' house. He had told them about me the night before and they didn't want to wait to meet me so we video chatted for a little bit. They seem like really nice people. They just kept complimenting me, my academic achievements, and saying how I look so much like my dad when he was my age. They want to meet me soon but they live a few hours away so it will take some time to set something up. I also very briefly talked to my half-brother on the same call. Our dad kind of put us on the spot. I think he was just excited for us to meet. We said hi and I said Merry Christmas and he said it back and then he told our dad I don't know what else you want me to say before walking away so, yeah, not the introduction I was imagining. But he and I are set to meet in person on New Year's Eve so I'm hoping that meeting goes a lot better. My dad showed up alone on Christmas night, half-brother was at his mom's house for Christmas, and brought two huge boxes of Christmas gifts. 
He bought me a ton of clothes and shoes, practically a new wardrobe. And I can actually see myself wearing most of the stuff he bought. He also got me an iPad Pro and a gaming PC. He said he wanted to get me a PS5 but they're notoriously hard to get so he's gonna keep an eye out and grab me one as soon as he can. Honestly I'm surprised he was able to get me as much as he did considering we made the plan the week before Christmas. He also bought my mom a few things which I think really surprised her but she was very grateful. I actually felt really bad that I only got him one gift in comparison but thankfully he really liked it. I thought he didn't at first because he started crying looking at all the pictures of me and started apologizing again saying he was sorry he was never there. But he did say he loved it and it was a very thoughtful gift. He especially loved that I made a page for our first Christmas photo and that I asked if we could fill out the rest of the album together. Also, I did include one page of pictures of me and my adoptive dad. I didn't want the album to be full of pictures of my adoptive dad so as not to seem insensitive but I also wanted my bio dad to know he was an important part of my life. After that we just spent the night talking, setting up my new PC and watching It's a Wonderful Life, my favorite Christmas movie. Before I told him that it was my favorite he said it was in his top 3 Christmas movies but now it's his favorite too because we watched it together. It got really late so my mom let him stay in the guest room so he didn't have to drive back home, he lives an hour away, in the dark and rainy weather. He treated us to breakfast the next morning and invited us to stay at his house for New Year's Eve which surprisingly my mom said we can go. One final note, a few comments told me that my adoptive dad was and will always be my dad too and I agree 100%. A couple days ago I went to the cemetery to visit his grave and talk to him. This is the first time I've ever gone there alone. Truthfully I don't know if I really believe in heaven or the afterlife. But on the off chance that he is out there somewhere watching over us, I wanted him to know that no matter how close I may get with bio dad he will never replace my adoptive dad in my heart. So that's about it. I'm meeting my half brother in person in a couple days. And hopefully my paternal grandparents soon after. Also, we're getting the paternity test done on Monday but that really is just a formality, mostly for insurance purposes, at this point. Thank you again for all the advice on both my previous posts. I hope you all had a great Christmas and have a happy new year. Smile. Update 3. My half-brother hates me. Just want to preface this by saying that the majority of this was written on New Year's Day so sorry if I come off as a jerk. I was just really upset that day. I didn't post it until now because I went back and forth on whether or not it would even matter. I didn't post it on the advice subreddit because I just don't see a point in asking for advice considering how the night went. I don't know if anyone will even see this. I was told to post this on my own profile and I think I've done it correctly. With that being said. New Year's Eve sucked. I thought I was prepared to meet my half-brother. A lot of people told me to go in with low expectations, be patient, don't expect him to warm up to me right away. And I was ready for that. I was ready for him to maybe be too shy to talk, or be uninterested and avoid me, or just be on his guard and keep interaction to a minimum. I was ready for so many unfortunate but understandable scenarios. What I was not ready for was for him to hate me before I even walked through the door. Me, my mom, and my best friend Josh, 17M, got to their house around 8 at night. My dad was happy to see us. Then he introduced us to my half-brother Ryan, 16M. The first thing Ryan said to me was you're shorter in person which I don't even know if he'd seen very many pictures of me but I'm 5 feet 11 inches so I'm not exactly short and he and I were about eye level so it was kind of a weird thing to say. But I work in customer service so I'm used to letting snide comments roll off my back. I just laughed it off and made a comment about how I'm hoping to gain a few more inches of height before I stop growing. Dad gave us the house tour and his house is insane. I knew he was well off and I'm not sure if this is considered a rich house by most people's standards but he has 5 bedrooms and 3 bathrooms. There's a whole office that looks more like a mini library and Ryan has a huge game room. It blew my mind. He even offered me my choice of the 3 guest rooms to be my own room for when I visit. Ryan rolled his eyes and let out a not at all subtle huff. Me and Josh gave each other a WTF look cause it was honestly unnecessary. The night went on and we were all talking in the living room. Ryan just sat on an armchair looking pissed off the whole time. Our dad was trying to get a conversation going between Ryan and I with multiple different topics and I was trying to engage in a conversation with Ryan but he limited most of his answers to yes no and I don't know. He was nicer to my mom, though still not enthused, when she asked him things which I at least appreciate that because if he would have been rude to her I know I wouldn't have been able to hold myself back from saying something. At one point my dad told Ryan to help Josh bring over a few food platters from the kitchen. My mom took the opportunity to ask my dad if he had even asked Ryan how he felt about us coming over. My dad said he did ask Ryan twice and both times Ryan said it was fine. He was clearly embarrassed about how Ryan was acting but he said it's probably just weird for him and he'll talk to him and that Ryan just needs more time. I asked Ryan if we could play some games in his game room cause it really is a cool looking room. He made an excuse about not wanting to mess up his save files on his games. I was just thinking you can obviously make separate save files and delete them afterwards but again for whatever reason I just made an excuse for him saying I understood. 
but our dad told him to show us the room so we went to the game room while my mom and dad hung out in the living room which is adjacent. Ryan booted up one of his games and was playing single player. He didn't offer to let us join and at this point in the night Josh and I didn't even bother asking cause it was obvious he would make an excuse to not let us play. I did ask him what game he was playing and what it was about because it did look like a fun game. He told me it's hard to explain and it would probably be easier to just google it. Josh just let out this stifled laughter which just made me laugh too because it was honestly ridiculous. Ryan was being rude at every opportunity without fail. I know that probably makes us sound like assholes but at this point in the night all we could do was laugh because it was a situation that just kept getting more and more bizarre. I think we were both just sitting there wondering if this guy was serious. He asked what was so funny and I just lied and said we remembered something funny that happened at school a few weeks ago. Thankfully he didn't ask for specifics. Although I'm pretty sure even if he did believe me he didn't care enough to ask anything about my life. Josh and I went back to the living room and I asked my dad if it was cool if we checked out my room again. He said of course but asked about Ryan. I had to awkwardly tell him I think we needed a little bit of space at the moment which he understood. So Josh and I went to the room and just hung out there ourselves until about 11.30 when my mom and dad called all of us to the living room. They must have strategized while we were all away because they sat us down and tried to get us to talk and address the situation. Ryan just kind of shut down and wouldn't really answer anything. He just looked annoyed. Our dad asked him if there was anything we could do to make things more comfortable for him and Ryan just straight up said us, me, my mom, and Josh, leaving would help. Our dad said that obviously that wasn't going to happen considering how late it was and the entire point was to celebrate New Year's together. So Ryan said fine if we wouldn't leave then he would. And he walked out the front door. It was about 10 minutes to midnight at that point. So our dad follows him out to stop him. And they got into a huge argument on the front porch. It was so incredibly awkward. I can't even begin to properly describe it. My mom was frantically looking for the TV remote to turn the volume up to drown out the sound. I couldn't hear everything they were saying but I heard bits and pieces. My dad was upset saying he asked Ryan if it was okay if we came over and he said it was fine twice. Ryan shouted that he changed his mind. Dad said that's okay but we were already here and the least he can do is be cordial and try to make the best of it. At one point Ryan shouted that we're not family and I'm not his brother. Which I admit that really stung. It's weird because I had already decided hours before that I didn't like him but for some reason it still hurt hearing him say that. Ryan said we haven't even taken the test yet, which is fair, we haven't yet but it is planned for Monday, and dad was already just inviting me to their holiday celebrations. I think Ryan is the only one who thinks, or maybe just hopes, that the test is gonna be negative. My mom finally got the TV on full blast. The three of us kind of awkwardly counted down the last five seconds and quietly wished each other a happy new year. I was trying to keep it together but it all kind of sunk in that my idea of what the night would be just fell apart. The whole reason we were there was to ring in the new year with my dad and half-brother. But neither of them were even there. I wish I would've just stayed home. About five minutes after midnight Ryan came back inside. Didn't say a word. He just quickly walked upstairs to his room. My dad came up to us and apologized profusely and said he thinks Ryan needs more time to come around. He did hug me for the longest time apologizing again. I wanted to tell him that I hated Ryan. I wanted to say that he was rude and immature. That we are clearly two very different people because I would never in a million years be as disrespectful as he was to us to a guest in my mother's home. But I just felt so bad for my dad who must have been in such a difficult position. It was like when he was hugging me to comfort me, he needed support too. So instead I just said that I understood. He said he was grateful to me for being so patient. But the truth is I was angry. I wanted to go home. But thankfully everyone was pretty tired and we all called it a night. The next morning my dad made us all breakfast. Ryan was up in his room the whole time. My dad went to check on him but came back down saying he was still asleep. I'd if that's actually true or not. I wouldn't be surprised if Ryan was just refusing to come down and have breakfast with us. So breakfast was actually great. We all avoided talking about the night before and just had a nice conversation. Josh and my dad got along really well which was awesome because Josh is my chosen brother. We've been through a lot together. After breakfast we left. Ryan never came down from his room and the truth is I was completely fine with that. My dad apologized again, he apologizes a lot, and said he'd see me on Monday after school to finally take the paternity test. On the ride back home my mom kind of broke the silence saying Caleb, me, I'm not so sure about what the results of that test will be anymore because your brother's kind of an asshole. And me and Josh just started dying of laughter. It was even funnier because the whole ride over there she kept drilling it into my head to be nice and not expect him to like me right away. And Josh was saying he was so surprised I didn't punch him in the face at some point. I know that probably makes us seem awful but it felt so good to have people that love me have my back and agree that it wasn't just me being crazy or oversensitive. Ryan took it up to 100 and stayed there the whole night. I didn't even realize it until then but it was like the whole time we were there I was holding my breath and on the ride back I felt like I could finally breathe again. 
I thought that was the end of it, but I got a text message from Ryan later that day. I'll just post it here since it's short. Picture of the text in the video description. He never replied. Maybe I took too long to reply. Josh and I were playing basketball at the time so I didn't have my phone on me. Or maybe he didn't like that I wrote too much back. I tend to write a lot if that wasn't obvious by now. Either way it doesn't seem like Ryan cares to hang out with me. So yeah, not at all what I was expecting. I debated even posting this because so many people seemed happy about my last couple posts. I thought maybe it would be better for people to think we met and everything was perfect. But that's not reality. I really wanted it to work. I don't even know where to go from here. After school today I drove to the city and met up with my dad to take the DNA test. It's done. Up until now I've been 100% confident on what the results will be but now I'm second guessing everything. Like what if I'm not actually his kid? What if I just wasted his time and his money the last few weeks? My mom says there is no possible way he's not my dad because he was the only guy she was with during the time she got pregnant with me. And I believe her but I still feel this uneasiness in my stomach. Ike. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. He paid extra for the rapid results so we'll know for sure within two days. Maybe it doesn't even matter at this point. Ryan seems determined to not let me be a part of their family. I'm sorry that this wasn't a happy update. I really wanted it to be. Update 4, it's official, he's my dad. My dad FaceTimed me from his car yesterday afternoon. He said he'd just gotten off work and he got the DNA results. My stomach was in knots because I couldn't really get a read on his face but then he just smiled and said you're mine, kiddo. I just felt this huge wave of happiness and relief wash over me. I was so sure he was my dad until after we took the test and doubt and fear started creeping in. But now that it's been officially confirmed with a blood test I'm so freaking happy. I have a dad again. After he told me, he actually showed up at the front door. He wasn't really at work when he FaceTimed me. He had gotten the results a few hours before and he wanted to celebrate in person so when he called me he'd actually just been sitting outside my house in his car. Him and my mom planned the whole thing out. He brought a cake and a little balloon that said it's a boy on it which was pretty hilarious. Ha ha ha. I was on cloud nine all night. We called my grandparents to tell them and they were really happy for us too. My dad and I decided that we're gonna go visit them next weekend since I have a three day weekend. Kinda nervous about that especially because I'll be so far away from home but they seem really great and just as excited as I am to meet so I'm hoping for the best. Sorry if I seem bipolar with my posts. It's just been a roller coaster with ups and downs. But for right now I'm beyond ecstatic. I can't stop looking at the picture of the results. Update 5, Weekend Trip Part 1 I split this post into two because it was just too much writing. I really need to work on condensing things, I know. I'll probably post the second half tomorrow but in short, the trip didn't turn out as well as I'd hoped but my grandparents are amazing, lovely people. I finally got to meet my grandparents this past weekend. We had the plan set that my dad and I would leave on Saturday morning and come back Monday afternoon. Unfortunately my dad had a work crisis come up and he called me on Friday afternoon to tell me he wouldn't be able to go. I was so bummed and I know he felt really guilty. But at the same time I really wanted to meet my grandparents and I already scheduled the days off at work so I kind of had my weekend planned around going. I consider myself an independent person so I didn't mind going by myself even though I obviously would have preferred my dad to be there. My mom on the other hand felt differently. She didn't want me to drive that far away on my own, it's about 3 hours away. So we compromised and she said if Josh goes with me I can go. And as soon as Josh heard they live right by a lake he was in. Ha ha. I called my grandparents and they said they would love if I still came and that Josh was more than welcome to come along. So he and I drove over on Saturday and when we got there I was nervous as hell. We knocked and when they came to answer the door I instantly recognized them from our FaceTime call on Christmas. But for some reason my brain shut down for a second and I stupidly asked if they were, their first names, and they both laughed and my grandpa said don't you dare call us by our first names. You call us grandpa and grandma. And my grandma chimed in saying Josh better call them the same because they don't have enough grandkids and now they have two more. I loved them right then and there. It was just such a breath of fresh air after the meeting with Ryan. We went inside, set our bags down, and had lunch. My grandma made sandwiches and we all just talked about our lives for a couple hours. My favorite part was hearing about their lives, how they met, what their parents were like. It's like this whole other side of my family tree just opened up and I'm learning so much about where I come from. I could have listened to their stories all day tbh. They showed me a bunch of pictures of my dad as well. Tbh I thought they were just being kind and trying to make me feel welcomed when they kept telling me how much I look like him in his youth. But then I saw the pictures of him as a teenager and I understood what they meant. It literally looked like it could be pictures of me if I was wearing 90s clothes and had a bad haircut. Me and Josh were both shocked at how strong the resemblance is. Later in the day my grandma wanted to make a pie for dessert. She said she loves to bake and we were celebrating so she offered to teach us her family recipe for cherry pie. As we were finishing up with the pie we were surprised to see my dad show up. 
He said the work issue got resolved a lot easier than he thought it would so he headed straight over there. I was thrilled, until I saw Ryan walk through the door shortly after him. I was confused because my dad said that was his mom's weekend. I discreetly asked about it while Ryan was saying hi to our grandparents and he just said it didn't work out whatever that means. I didn't post about it, but I did go over to my dad's house for dinner last week. It was nowhere near as bad as New Year's Eve but Ryan still didn't really talk to me. There was one moment where I thought he and I had something to connect on but he shut it down pretty quickly. So when I saw Ryan walk through the door I was a bit concerned because he just doesn't like me and he makes it pretty obvious. Despite that, the first hour and a half were fine. Ryan did say hi to me. Well to be more accurate he said sup pretty boy? Which was kind of annoying because that seems to be the name he's decided for me. I don't understand it or like it. I mean, yeah I like to dress nice and take care of myself but I'm not wearing makeup or spending hours in front of a mirror. But I just let it go and said hi. Josh and Ryan greeted each other. All was good. Ryan was just talking to our grandparents and my dad. He didn't talk to me or Josh other than saying hi but that was fine. But then my grandma's timer went off for the pie so I followed her to the kitchen and offered to take the pie out. Ryan followed us and he made a comment about how I'm trying to come off as Mr. Nice Guy. It didn't even make sense. The oven is low to the ground and she's an older woman so why wouldn't I offer to get it for her so she doesn't have to bend down? To me that's just common courtesy. I wasn't trying to put on an act. I would do the same thing for my maternal grandma. But I just asked him to please not start with that because I just came to have a good weekend. He started to argue but our grandma told him to knock it off and not to start a fight in her house. He said sorry to her and walked out of the kitchen. Oh man I wanted to hug her and kiss her on the cheek. I thought finally, there is an adult who sees how he acts, calls him out on it and shuts it down instead of babying him. Granted she did ask me to be patient because this is probably really hard for him to come to terms with, that he's not the only child or grandson anymore. I told her I'm completely fine with giving Ryan time and space, I just hate that he acts so unnecessarily rude. We were all having a good time so why does he have to try to start drama just because I offered to take a pie out of the oven, you know? Anyway so the rest of the night was fine. Ryan kind of shut down and was mostly quiet. My dad did pull him aside and talk to him at one point. I'd quote was said but Ryan was more talkative to our grandparents after that. More specifically he started recounting the greatest hits of his relationship with our grandparents. I think he was doing it on purpose but maybe I'm just pessimistic. Either way I ignored it and we had a really great night. The pie was absolutely delicious BTW. There was a minor issue when it came time to assign sleeping arrangements. They only have two extra rooms in their house so originally it was gonna be me and my dad each having our own room. But we went from two to four with Josh and Ryan added in. So my grandma suggested my dad take one room and me, Josh, and Ryan take the other. And I was just thinking there is no way I'm staying in a room with Ryan overnight. I don't think either one of us would be comfortable with that. Josh and I told them we were fine sleeping on the couches in the living room so Ryan and my dad could have the rooms but none of the adults were having it. So finally Ryan suggested he and our dad share a room and Josh and I take the other which I thought was a good compromise and tbh I thought was really cool of Ryan to willingly give up the room. Josh and I were talking that night and we agreed hopefully that was a sign that things were looking up with him. We were wrong. Update 6, Weekend Trip Part 2. I just want to add a few quick notes on my last post. A few people messaged me about Ryan's pretty boy comment. I truly don't think he meant it in any sort of creepy or homophobic way. Josh and I are just best friends, more like brothers. Not that there would be anything wrong with us if we were gay, but we're not, I think Ryan calls me that as a way to try to emasculate me. And when I said I try to take care of myself I just meant I try to keep my skin clear and have my hair neat so it doesn't look sloppy. I don't think that makes me a pretty boy but apparently Ryan does. I know a handful of people said that I shouldn't have brought Josh to Nye as it might have been too much for Ryan to handle, I explained that Josh was always gonna be with me and my mom that night regardless of where we celebrated. So I just wanna give a reminder that Josh was only with me this past weekend because I was going to be alone at first. Even if I wasn't, Ryan was never supposed to be there. I'm still not sure what happened with his mom that caused him to join the trip last minute, but please keep that in mind as you read this post. So the next day we got up and went down to the lake. My grandpa showed us this little area nearby that is like an obstacle course kind of thing. I don't really know how to explain it. It's kind of what I would expect they use to train people in the military. It has balance beams, monkey bars, a tire section you have to hop through, etc. But anyway he suggested that me, Ryan, and Josh run the course. Me and Josh were down but Ryan said no because he's done it a million times already. We still try to get him to do it with us. Josh even asked Ryan if he could walk us through it. It's honestly pretty self-explanatory, but we were just trying to get Ryan to join us, but he insisted on not doing it. Josh and I usually have friendly competitions with everything so we made a friendly wager to see who could finish the course faster. So during it we were taunting each other like when I was ahead I would turn around and give him shit and then at the top of the climbing wall he started doing a weird dance. It was hilarious to us. 
But of course when we were done Ryan made a comment asking what the point of doing it was if we weren't going to take it seriously. Josh told him we're not training for the Olympics, we're just having fun. We went down to the lake which was an incredible sight. The view there is amazing. So we got into swim and there's a swing we kept jumping into the water from. It was a blast. Josh and I both tried to get Ryan to join us several times but he refused when we asked. He refused when my grandpa and dad encouraged him. He just wanted to do his own thing. After a while my grandma called us back to the house because she made lunch. So we went and ate. Everything was fine at lunch. Afterwards we're all standing outside on the front porch and my grandpa started asking about sports, which I only play basketball but Josh is an all-around athlete so he and my grandpa started talking about all the sports he plays and apparently that pissed Ryan off because he made another rude comment asking if athlete was Josh's only personality trait. Josh told him to chill and stop trying to start problems all the time. And then Ryan shouted back asking why Josh kept calling him grandpa, again, our grandparents insisted on Josh calling them grandma and grandpa as soon as we got there, and then Ryan doubled down by asking why Josh was even there because he's not family and he asked why don't you go hang out with your own grandpa? I felt the whole world stop at that moment. Josh's paternal grandfather died last year and Josh took it very very hard. He loved his grandpa more than anyone. He was closer to his grandpa than his actual dad. To be fair to Ryan, he did not know. There's no way he could have known so I know he didn't purposely say it to be cruel or hurtful. But in that moment it didn't matter to Joshua he lunged at him and I had to hold him back trying my hardest to get through to him that Ryan doesn't know what he said. I was practically begging him to take a walk with me to the lake. And everyone else is just standing there looking confused and probably a bit scared because Josh looked like he wanted to murder Ryan. Josh is a guy's guy. He's friends with everyone. Not a mean bone in his body. Never starts fights with anyone. But when Ryan said that I saw a completely different side of him. He was furious. I've seen him mad before but never like that. I know it hurt me when Ryan said what he said because I cared about Josh's grandpa too but I can't even imagine what it felt like for Josh. They took Ryan into the house and I managed to convince Josh to take a walk down to the lake with me. My dad asked what happened and I told him to just give us a few minutes and to keep Ryan inside. Josh ended up punching a tree on the way to the lake. I want to reiterate that he's not a violent or angry person because I know that sounds bad. Ryan just hit the one nerve that caused him to completely lose his cool. I was actually grateful that he hit a tree instead of Ryan. And I know he only walked away as a favor to me because he was livid. We got to the lake and sat down at a bench and Josh just broke down. I hated seeing him like that. He's the nicest guy in the world. He doesn't deserve that kind of pain. He said Ryan just runs his mouth and says whatever he wants and nobody ever does shit about it. I can't exactly blame him. I'm frustrated about the way Ryan acts too. So we decided it was time to go back home. There was no way we were surviving another 24 hours there. My dad and grandpa eventually came up to sit with us and we explained why Josh got so angry. He apologized to both of them but, thankfully they completely understood. They did try to convince us to stay but I was pretty adamant that it was time to go. I wasn't going to let Josh have to sit through another day there and I certainly wasn't going to let him drive back home alone, we took his car there. So we went back to the house, I went in and quickly grabbed all of our stuff while Josh waited outside with my dad. My grandma was really upset that we were leaving and I felt really bad that this was her first impression of me. I apologized and essentially begged her to not think that this is who me and Josh are. We're good kids. We don't fly off the handle and start shit all the time. It was just a really horrible set of circumstances. I guess at some point while I was packing someone must have told Ryan what happened because on my way out he stopped me and said he was sorry but obviously he didn't know about Josh's grandpa or he would never have said that. Which I do believe because he did look genuinely uncomfortable talking to me about it. He said his grandma said he has to apologize to Josh before we left and I said I would tell Josh on his behalf but there's no way Josh wanted to see him right now. I did want to lay into him at that moment about him just being a jackass all the time but I'm not one to kick someone when they're down and his face did look like he felt like crap already. My dad was really upset about the whole thing and I told him that I love him and I want to be a part of his family but if he wants me in his life he needs to get Ryan under control because his smart mouth has gotten old very fast. He said he understood and to not worry about it because he was going to figure it out. I did apologize later because I know I shouldn't have talked to him like that, but I was just mad at the whole thing at that point. Josh and I left and about halfway through the ride back home he was back to normal. But when we got back to my house my mom was pissed off when she found out what happened. Josh is like a second son to her so she was pretty angry about the whole thing. In hindsight we should have just went back to Josh's house and stayed there for the day or just said one of us was feeling sick or something and that's why we left early. Ike. Thankfully I convinced her not to call my dad at the time. She did call him the next day when she had calmed down. My dad called me a short while after and asked if I would be willing to go to a group therapy session with him and Ryan. Honestly, I think it sounds pointless but if it's a chance to get Ryan and I to at least be courteous to each other I'll take it. My dad said he has a few therapists in mind and he's gonna see if one of them can get us an appointment next week. Last thing, 
I'm definitely more of a logical slash factual person over an emotional one so I try to write without a bias, even though Ryan frustrates the hell out of me. I hope it doesn't come off as me painting him as the devil because I do see some semblance of a good person in him. When he talks to our dad and grandparents he seems like such a normal guy. It's only when it comes to me, and Josh at the end of our trip, that he gets really mean and belittling. I don't know what his issue is but I really wish I could meet the guy he is to everyone else. Update 7, Family Therapy. The therapy session was interesting. I wasn't really sure what to expect. I thought she was gonna make us look at ink pictures and say what we saw or do trust exercises or something but all we did was talk. It wasn't awful but it wasn't really great either. I don't think much of anything got resolved but I guess that would have been too much to ask for a single session. I drove to the city on Wednesday after school. I met up with my dad and Ryan at the therapist's office. We didn't really talk much before we got in. Ryan was texting his mom and my dad wanted to wait until we got into the therapist's office. When we did get in the therapist asked us to introduce ourselves and then she asked why we had come to therapy and my dad gave her a quick rundown of the story so far. She asked me how I felt about this whole scenario. Ryan complained asking why I got to talk first. Because the therapist asked me? So she promised he would get his chance to speak but that we shouldn't interrupt each other. I told her my only issue is that right there. Ryan is rude and treats me like crap for no reason. He said he has his reasons. The therapist asked him what his reasons for disliking me were. He apparently had a whole list ready. His reasons were. 1. I always bring Josh along as my bodyguard. I told him that is not true. I don't need Josh to fight my battles for me. I've seen Ryan much more by myself than I have with Joshua. Josh was only there two times. Nye, which my dad confirmed right there that he asked Ryan if he was okay with my mom and Josh coming to their house that night or if he wanted to wait until it could just be the three of us. Ryan said he was fine with all three of us coming. He said again that he changed his mind when we got there. The therapist asked what made him change his mind and he said he just did. He wouldn't elaborate. Second time was to visit my grandparents which I reminded him that Josh only came with at my mother's insistence so I didn't have to drive and be there alone and that Ryan wasn't even supposed to be there that weekend. He replied that there is grandparents so he doesn't need an invite. I said that's true but I'm just saying I had no idea he was ever going to be there so it's not like he can say I purposely brought Josh as backup. 2. I try to turn everyone against him and he's tired of being blamed and punished for not liking me. I told him I don't try to turn anyone against him. I'm just trying to get to know my newly discovered family. If he's getting in trouble that is due to his own actions, not mine. I've been nothing but patient and understanding with him even when he's been mean to me every chance he gets. And I'm not the one that punishes him for his behavior so why is he taking his anger out on me anyway? The therapist asked my dad if he's been punishing Ryan for his behavior. He said no, he wouldn't ground Ryan for having heightened emotions. She asked Ryan if he's not being grounded then what did he mean by being punished? He responded that his dad and grandparents are scolding him about his behavior and the things he said to me and Josh. I almost couldn't believe it. Apparently he thinks being told not to be so blatantly rude is punishment. 3. He thinks I'm just putting on a golden boy act to try to get his dad's money. I actually laughed at this one. I've seen several people suggest this might be an issue but I honestly thought there was no way this 16 year old guy was that concerned about money and inheritance. Well I was wrong. I said man if this is really your biggest concern we can go to dad's office right now and I'll sign whatever document I need to that waives my rights to an inheritance. I truly don't care about our dad's money. Ryan can have every cent. I didn't come from money and I don't need it to be happy. I plan to create my own wealth and success in life. If Ryan needs that peace of mind that the money is his, I will gladly sign it all over if it gets him to shift his attitude towards me. Unfortunately our dad went into lawyer mode and said we can't just do that because my mom would need to be present because I'm a minor and I'd likely have to reaffirm the validity of my choice when I turn 18 anyway. Then he said he doesn't even want me to sign away my rights to anything so that kind of went nowhere. 4. I was trying to buy his dad's love with the photo album Christmas gift. I didn't even get a chance to respond to this one because our dad jumped in. He was mad. He told Ryan that he has no right to try to decide how someone else perceives a gift. He said that gift meant a lot to him and when Ryan's older and has his own kids he'll understand how important those memories are and how much it would hurt if he didn't get to be a part of your kid's childhood. The therapist asked if I could explain to Ryan why I wanted to be a part of their family. Even though I felt it was a bit personal considering I'm not close at all with Ryan I decided to be honest and tried to explain to him what it was like to lose my adoptive father at 8 years old. I tried to explain how hard it was to be embarrassed slash sad when our school or my friend group had father slash son events and I couldn't participate because I didn't have a dad anymore. Or what it's like to avoid social media on Father's Day because everyone is understandably posting pictures of their father and praising them for all the things they do and continue to do for their family and you don't want to have to face the reality that you don't get to make memories with your father anymore. When I found out our dad was my bio dad and that he actually wanted to be a part of my life I took it as a second chance to have a father again. Ryan angrily said he knows what it's like to lose a parent too. 
I was a bit shocked because I was thinking maybe he had a stepdad or stepmom that died and I didn't know about this. But no. He said ever since his parents divorced he only gets to see his mom twice a month. I saw red. He was talking about his parents divorce. He equated my father's death to his parents splitting up. I probably should have just walked out but I genuinely could not believe what he was saying. I angrily told him how dare he compare the two events. His mother moved across town, she's not buried six feet underground. I told him you can call your mom and talk to her whenever you want. I reminded him that he was literally texting her about the results of a math test he took while we were waiting to go in. Just FYI, he said this out loud to our dad, I wasn't even next to him so I wasn't reading his messages or anything, I told him I haven't spoken to my father in almost 9 years and I'll never get to speak to him again. So no, he does not know what it's like to lose a parent. Ryan's only response was okay so I don't get to talk? Everything I said went right over his head. Or maybe he's just that big of an asshole that he really didn't care what he was saying and how insanely inappropriate it was. Both our dad and the therapist tried to explain to him that divorce and death are two wildly different scenarios and Ryan eventually just rolled his eyes and said okay I get it. Side note, I know some people will probably try to decipher that moment as Ryan was trying to open up and you shut him down trust me, he was not. I would love to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he had good intentions but it just came out horribly. But his attitude, body language, and tone of voice was not I feel your pain so much as it was get over it. I know it may be hard to get that vibe when just reading about it, but if you were in that room you wouldn't have a doubt in your mind that he was being snarky. I know our dad and the therapist easily picked it up too. You could see it in our dad's embarrassed face and the therapist remained calm and had a poker face the entire session but you could tell by the way she was talking that even she was a bit surprised by what Ryan was saying. The therapist asked if Ryan wanted to share anything about his situation with his mother. Ryan looked like he wanted to say something but was looking at me kind of weird. I took it as a sign of uncomfortableness so I did what someone suggested on my last post and offered to leave the room if he needed to talk privately to her and our father. And truthfully I wanted to leave the room anyway because I felt like I needed to calm myself down. But Ryan said he just didn't feel like talking about it at all. So the therapist decided to switch gears and asked our dad to explain to us why it was so important to him that we get along with each other. He told us that he has a brother that he hasn't seen or spoken to in over 20 years and he misses him every day. He wishes they could be a part of each other's lives again. And when he sees how Ryan and I don't get along it makes him scared that once we're both out in the adult world, which will happen very fast, we'll never speak to each other again. The therapist told our dad the circumstances were very different because he grew up with his brother whereas Ryan and I just met as teenagers. My dad said he knows it's different but one day, hopefully very far from now, he'll be gone and he just wishes we could be there for each other. He actually got really emotional saying all this. Maybe I was just seeing what I wanted to see but it genuinely looked like Ryan let his guard down as our dad spoke. He looked almost sad to see our dad so upset. At one point Ryan sort of randomly asked our dad if he cheated on Ryan's mom with my mom and did she find out and that's why they divorced? Our dad faced him, looked him straight in the eyes and explained to him that that's not the case. He told Ryan to ask his mom how they met. Apparently they met at a summer job they both worked in 2004. He reminded Ryan I was conceived on his 25th birthday in February. He said he doesn't claim to be a perfect man but that he's definitely not a cheater. He told Ryan he's sorry that things didn't work out with his mom but that it's not healthy or fair to anyone to stay with someone you're not truly happy with, even for your children. The therapist co-signed on that and explained to Ryan that while it's completely normal for him to be hurt and upset that his parents divorced, that his parents did the right thing in separating instead of staying in an unhappy marriage. Our dad said that even then he doesn't regret ever being with Ryan's mom because she gave him Ryan. The therapist surprisingly said we had a good session, how that was considered good. I'd and she wanted us to go home and really think about what everyone said and try to see things from each other's point of view. She said her initial conclusion is that Ryan and I seem to have already made up our minds about each other based on limited interaction and we think we know who the other is and what our intentions are when really we don't know each other at all. On the way out my dad thanked us for going because he knew neither of us really wanted to do it. He asked if we would go again and Ryan said he'll go for our dad but he didn't want to go with me because he felt like he couldn't really speak his mind. To his credit he did say no offense to me. And none was taken because I definitely do not want to have to sit through any more of Ryan's analogies. Dad said that's fine he can go on his own if he's more comfortable with that. He asked if I wanted to go on my own too and I told him I'd think about it but I really don't want to. It's two hours of driving for me to talk to a therapist for an hour about stuff I've already repeated ad nauseum online and to my friends and family. I started thinking about what the therapist said and what a lot of people have said on my posts about trying to be more empathetic towards Ryan and the situation he's in. So even though I stand by what I said about him relating death and divorce as insensitive I did tell him I don't know the situation with his mom and I'm sorry if I made him feel unheard or unimportant when he brought her up. I let my emotions get the better of me in the moment. Ryan said, thanks and our dad asked if I wanted to get dinner with him but I lied and said I promised my mom I'd be home for dinner. The truth is I felt like I already had enough interaction with the both of them for one day and just wanted to leave on a neutral note. 
With all that being said, I don't think I'll be updating for a while unless something big happens. I feel like my posts are nothing but negativity and no progress lately and I don't want to be redundant. Not to mention I've seen and been told that my posts are being reposted elsewhere and the last thing I need right now is for Ryan to somehow stumble upon my posts. I don't think he's the type to use Reddit but I know my posts have made their way to Instagram and YouTube accounts with much bigger audiences so I'd rather just be cautious and stop oversharing so much. Thank you to anyone who has followed my rants and story up until now. I really hope to have a better update someday. Update 8, Some Clarifications This isn't really an update. I just wanted to clarify a few things. I've said some of these things in comments on my posts but I understand not everyone reads every comment and just reads what I write in my main posts. I want to start off by saying I have told everything exactly as it happened. Obviously there are things and conversations I am not privy to, especially on Ryan's side of things. But I have attempted to be as unbiased and fair as possible when recounting events. I try to give Ryan credit when it's due. I haven't changed or withheld any information to try to portray myself as better than him in any way. I appreciate the comments telling me how mature and patient I am but I feel it would be disingenuous to not be a bit more clear on where I stand. I've mentioned this in the comments before but if Ryan was any other guy I would have hit him a long time ago. I know people will say violence is not the answer and I know that, but I'm just being truthful. I am not someone who lets others disrespect me, my friends or my family and while I now understand that his world has been overturned significantly more than mine has, Ryan has, in my eyes, crossed the line quite a few times. The only reason I haven't hit him and why I held Josh back at my grandparents' house is because even though my dad has been nothing but kind and welcoming to me, I still don't have a strong bond with him. We just met. I want to know him and have him in my life but I'm scared that if I retaliate by hitting or even just yelling at Ryan too harshly my dad may decide he doesn't want to have a relationship with me anymore. So it's not moral superiority that causes me to be so patient and mature in these scenarios, it's fear of losing my dad before I even get to know him. If I've painted myself as some paragon of goodness who can do no wrong in my posts, I apologize. That is not my intent. I'm not perfect. I'm definitely not the most mature 17 year old in the world. I'm just a kid who desperately wants a chance at having a dad again. To that end, I am putting up with Ryan's behavior and constantly attempting to be the bigger person when he lashes out at me. Regarding Ryan's living situation, he lives with our dad full time. I'm not sure exactly when Ryan's parents divorced but I know it's been years. My dad did say that Ryan chose to live with him so I would imagine it was sometime within the last few years if he was old enough to get to decide who he wanted to live with. I know people have said Ryan is scared of having to now share time with his dad but I can say with full confidence that physically it's not that big of a loss for him. I understand emotionally is a whole different thing. Please don't yell at me, I live an hour away so meeting up multiple times a week is just not realistic between mine and my dad's schedules. I've seen our dad a lot within the past month but that's because there was a lot to do with meeting family and taking the paternity test and getting the results. I don't expect this to be the standard moving forward and even then the time I've spent with him recently is nothing compared to the alone time Ryan still had with him during the same month. As for Ryan's mother, I don't know much. I've seen a lot of people say that she must be an absentee parent and as of right now I just don't get that vibe. I agree that it's odd that she only sees Ryan every other weekend. I'm not sure why that's their arrangement but Ryan said his mom was texting him to ask how he did on his math test and I guess that doesn't scream neglectful parent to me. I don't think someone who doesn't love their kid would care to ask how they're doing in school. On several different occasions I've heard Ryan mention things she's told him recently so I know they stay in regular contact. At the very least she does not view Ryan as out of sight, out of mind. And her and my dad are clearly on friendly terms considering she messaged him about seeing my picture. He never would have found me if not for her. I don't think she would go out of her way to contact him on something that could have been nothing if they weren't on good terms. Some people have asked about Ryan and his personality and social life. Again, I haven't changed or misrepresented anything I've experienced. But with that being said, I may have unintentionally made him appear to be a loner or socially distant. He's not. He looks like any other guy our age. He could be walking down the halls of any high school and he wouldn't stand out in any negative way. I apologize if I made it seem like he's the shy quiet kid hiding inside his hoodie or anything like that. I don't know anything about his friend circle. People have asked if he has friends or has trouble making friends. I would assume he has no issue with that. Like I said he's like any other teenage boy. Physically he's not an ugly guy at all so I would imagine he would have no problem getting interest from girls. I haven't met or seen any of his friends and I know a lot of people said that he should have been allowed to have a friend at night. I'm not sure why people seem to blame me for Ryan being alone that night. After the therapy session I now know that both my dad and Ryan knew Josh was coming so that was on them to have him invite a friend. It's not my house to invite people to and I hadn't even met Ryan or have any way to contact him so it's not like I could message him to say feel free to bring a friend because I'm bringing mine. Ike. That's all I can think of right now. I hope this clears a few things up. I know I'm pretty bad about responding to comments if it's not within a few hours after I make a new post, but I do read every comment, I do miss some if it's a reply to someone else and I don't get a notification for it. 
I did get back to a lot of people on my last post just now. Again, I don't think I'm gonna be updating unless something big happens but I'm still hoping things start to look up soon. Update 9, February. I know I said I would only update if something big happened. That isn't the case but it's been a month since my last real update and I guess I just feel the need to vent. Ryan is hot and cold. I don't know how his therapy is going but I know he still attends. Sometimes I feel like he's trying and sometimes it's like he's the same as he's always been to me. I don't want to bore anyone with super detailed events like I have in the past so here are a few briefish examples of his shifting behavior in the past month. A week after our group therapy session Ryan got appendicitis and had to get an appendectomy. He was fine but when he was discharged from the hospital he was told to stay home and try to stay on bed rest as much as possible for at least a week. I went to his city with a group of my friends the week that happened because we had a day off from school. We were planning on riding go-karts and hitting the batting cages. My mom mentioned that it would be nice to check in on Ryan while I was there and see if he needed anything since our dad was at work and he was presumably home alone. I didn't really want to because I had reached out to Ryan over text to offer well wishes after his surgery and he didn't seem to care at all. He didn't even save my number after his New Year's Day apology which just made me feel stupid that I sent him a text wishing him well just to get a who is this? In response. Also I was trying to keep my distance from him in general but I thought my mom was right and I decided it wouldn't hurt to stop by and ask. I figured if he was mad I could just make a quick escape and let it be a lesson learned not to drop by unless our dad was home. So we went inside and he was in his game room. He asked what I was doing there and I told him we just stopped by to see if he needed us to go to the store and get him anything or if he wanted us to go get him food or something since he wasn't allowed to drive until he was off his pain meds. He said he didn't need anything from me. We were getting ready to leave but my friend Austin saw the game Ryan was playing and started talking to him about it. And surprisingly Ryan was engaging in conversation with him about it. A couple of my friends started looking at all his games and consoles and I quietly asked Ryan if it was cool if we hung out there for a bit, because tbh my friends seemed to be getting a bit too comfortable there pretty quickly. I told him we could leave if he was just trying to relax. He said it's whatever and went back to talking to Austin about the game he was playing and asked if he wanted to co-op. So we all ended up sitting down and playing video games for a bit. Ryan has two TVs and several handheld consoles so he set us up with our own game while he and Austin played the one he was already playing. He didn't make any complaints about save files or look mad or bother that we were there. It was honestly a pretty fun day. After a couple hours we got hungry so we decided to order pizza and when my friends and I were pooling our money together like we always do Ryan offered to pay for the whole thing. He actually said no, you guys are guests. My dad would want me to pay. In a friendly voice and he paid. He didn't even eat anything. Maybe because he was on a diet after his procedure or maybe he just wasn't hungry but he paid the whole bill regardless. Me and Josh were honestly just shocked because it was such a huge departure from the way he was with us on New Year's Eve. After we left Ryan requested all of my friends on Instagram except Josh and I which kinda sucked but it wasn't the end of the world. I'd kiff it was the meds he was on, or him being too tired from his surgery to be mad at me, or maybe he had a good therapy session that week but he was like a different, nicer person. Unfortunately that didn't last. A few days later on that weekend our dad had a barbecue with all his friends and their families attending for his birthday. My mom and I went. When we got there Ryan asked what I had gotten our dad. I told him I'd gotten him a few shirts and some ties for work. He asked what color. I told him and he said that's his least favorite color I just said okay man if he doesn't like it I can exchange it for something else. It sucked cause I thought he had turned over a new leaf when we visited him after his appendectomy. My dad introduced me and my mom to a lot of his friends. Everyone was understandably curious about me because most of these people have known my dad the majority of his adult life so to find out he has a surprise second teenage son was probably a shock to them. And it seemed like the ones that didn't know the story were all being informed by the ones who did know. These were grown adults but I still felt like I was standing in my school's cafeteria after a rumor was going around about me. There were a few other teens there and they of course all knew Ryan. I tried to talk to them and they, including Ryan, weren't necessarily rude but they clearly didn't want me in their circle either which made me feel out of place so I left them alone. I really wish that could have been one of Ryan's nicer days. Luckily there was another girl around my age there that wasn't part of their group so I hung out with her while trying to ignore all the that's him looks from my dad's friends. Didn't hurt that she was really pretty too, embarrassed smiley face. Later on Ryan came up to me and said I must love all the attention being on me even though it's someone else's birthday. I told him I didn't and that it's actually extremely uncomfortable to walk into a place and have everyone staring and whispering about you. On Valentine's Day my friends and I participated in a showcase at our school. It was basically like a singing talent show but you lip sync to everything and there's no actual winners. It was basically entertainment for the parents who paid for tickets and the Valentine's Day dinner. I didn't even want to do it because contrary to Ryan's beliefs I am someone who would much rather blend in than be in the spotlight. But a lot of teachers at my school offer extra credit to students who participate in school events like that and it required minimal effort and preparation. Plus my friends kind of peer pressured me into it so I did it with them. 
I actually didn't invite my dad because I knew that even if he didn't have a date for Valentine's and could show up that he would bring Ryan and I just didn't want to deal with him that night. But my mom invited my dad anyway without telling me, not as a date, she said because I won't have too many things like this for him to attend, and he was actually really upset that I didn't tell him about it because he said he's missed so many of my school events already so I felt pretty bad about it afterwards. But he did bring Ryan and surprisingly Ryan was really chill that night. He actually complimented us. Not to me directly but I heard him tell one of my friends that we did really good and it looked like fun. Again, another hot and cold moment. And finally just a couple days ago Josh, Austin, and I were playing basketball at the park. Austin dropped his phone and shattered his screen so he went home to tell his parents so they could get the screen replaced. Ryan showed up an hour and a half after that looking for Austin. He was stopping by to drop off a video game for Austin to borrow. Austin never told us Ryan was gonna show up. We found out later that it was a bit of a misunderstanding due to Austin shattering his screen. Austin never actually intended for Ryan to show up. So we told Ryan what happened and that we didn't know exactly where he went because there's a few places in our town that you can get your phone screen replaced. We offered to give the game to Austin on his behalf but he just walked off and a couple minutes later we saw him arguing with a group of guys nearby. Me and Josh went over and Ryan was just going off on them. We asked what was going on and one of the guys said we need to get our boy out of there before he got hurt. Of course that pissed Ryan off even more because he doesn't see me and Josh as friends or even friendly so he got more aggressive and pushed one of them. Honestly, I wanted to let him get his ass beat because the three guys clearly didn't want to fight but Ryan was getting in their faces and pushing them. But more than that I didn't want to have to look my dad in the face with him knowing I just stood by while Ryan got his ass kicked by three guys even if he was the one instigating. So Josh and I end up getting into a physical confrontation with these guys that we have no problem with because Ryan wouldn't stop running his mouth at them. Thankfully no punches were thrown so it wasn't a fight, just a lot of pushing, grabbing, and yelling while trying to separate Ryan from the other guys. After me and Josh separated Ryan from the three guys they left and Ryan started yelling at me that he doesn't ever need my help and to stay the fuck out of his business. I was pretty pissed because we were just trying to help him not end up in the hospital due to his temper tantrum so I told him you're in my town looking for one of my friends and you're making it my business because I can't just stand by and let you get beat up. Ick how big of a badass he thinks he is, he wasn't winning a fight against those three guys. He told me to fuck off and left. I still have no idea why he even wanted to fight them in the first place. Yesterday my friends Austin and Trevor went to the city. I got a text from Austin asking if I was cool with them hanging out with Ryan. Apparently Trevor posted a story of them at this arcade slash entertainment center in the city and Ryan saw it and asked if he could meet up with them. I told Austin they don't need my permission to hang out with Ryan if they want. But they both know that I've had several issues with Ryan and our friend group has all been together since we were in elementary so I appreciated that they asked me. I'll admit it does suck that Ryan won't give me a fair chance but seems to like all my friends and apparently he now wants to hang out with them. I don't think he's doing it to get under my skin or anything. He does seem to genuinely like all my friends, especially Austin as he and Ryan are both big gamers and seem to know a bunch of games I've never heard of. One thing Austin said is that he was talking to Ryan about a game that Josh, Austin, and I play together. Ryan said he likes that game and asked about playing. Austin told him yeah he could join our squad when we play but Ryan immediately changed his mind and suddenly said he doesn't play that game anymore. Austin said it was pretty obvious that he didn't want to play with me, and possibly Josh. Austin and Trevor both told me that Ryan is overall a chill guy but that they just stick to being online friends with him going forward because they don't want to cause any issues between us. So that's where we're at. I don't really understand Ryan or why he does the things he does. Like I said, sometimes he's nice. Never to me directly but he just leaves me alone I guess would be the right way to say it. But then other times, especially at the weekly dinners I have with him and our dad, he's just mean and aggressive for no reason. It's honestly pretty frustrating. I know therapy isn't an instant fix but I hope he's taking it seriously because putting up with him when he's in a bad mood is exhausting. Update 10, Breaking Point I don't know what to do anymore. I feel like I'm at the end of my rope. I told my dad two weeks ago that I think he and I should just have our own time. Whenever I hang out with him and Ryan it's always Ryan being passive aggressive at best and downright mean on average. He doesn't like me. He will never like me. I've accepted that. I'm over it. I told our dad I'll go to the weekly dinner he likes to have but other than that I would rather see him alone, without Ryan there. I explained that it didn't necessarily have to be forever but at least for a while. He was upset because I know he wants us to get along but he agreed to my request anyway. I should also mention that I wanted to do weekly dinners on weekends because that works better for my schedule but Ryan insisted on them being on weekdays so he could be there. I was confused because even when it was his idea and he said he wanted to be there he's never nice to me during dinner. After the events of Sunday I believe that his intentions were never that he wanted it to be a family dinner, he just wanted to keep tabs on me and our dad and he can't do that if I go to dinner on weekends when Ryan isn't there half of those days. I'm taking the SAT on Saturday. Between work, school, extracurriculars, and trying to find time to have a social life somewhere in between I haven't studied anywhere near as much as I would like. 
So on Sunday I was gonna go to my friend Bree's house to study together with a couple of our other friends. But my dad really wanted to hang out that weekend. I felt guilty because I had to cancel on our plans the weekend before because I had a project due for one of my classes. He offered to help me study for my SAT and TBH I didn't really want or need his help. Not because I didn't want to spend time with him, because I definitely did, but I just really wanted to study with my friends who were also taking the test. But I let my guilt win and I said we could go to the library for a few hours if he wanted to help me study. I suggested the library because my mom had a friend visiting from out of state and they're very chatty at home. This was our first actual one-on-one -on -one hangout since I asked him to keep our time separate from Ryan. He came by himself and we went to the local library. I reminded him of the math sections that I needed to study and we started. It was actually really nice to have my dad help me. I'm really bad at math but he's good at it so he was surprisingly really helpful for someone who hasn't been in school in almost 20 years. Plus he admitted later on that he refreshed his knowledge a bit the night before so he could be helpful. He was taking it seriously and explained to me what I was doing wrong in solving a few problems. I was really enjoying the time spent with him even though I was just studying for a test. About an hour and 15 minutes after we'd been in the library, Ryan walks up to us. He showed up at the library. In my town. The town that is an hour away from his home. I thought I was hallucinating at first. I thought there's no way he just drove an hour to interrupt my SAT prep. But it was real and he was there. I know it wasn't planned because my dad looked just as confused as I was. He asked Ryan how he knew where we were and Ryan reminded him that they have each other's locations shared with each other. He asked what Ryan was doing there and Ryan held up an SAT prep book and said he came to study too. I asked if he had even signed up for the SAT because just last week when our dad asked him about it at dinner he said he wasn't going to do it on the 12th and he'd take it later. Ryan said he decided to sign up for it. I asked when he signed up. He said yesterday. I told him that's impossible because late registration ended on the first of the month. He said he signed up for a later one but when I asked which one he didn't remember the date or even just the month. I don't believe that he actually signed up to take it. He sat down and our dad told him that he should have called and asked before coming. Ryan got defensive and started saying that he has to take the SAT too and it's not fair that I'm getting help and he isn't. Then he ended his argument with are you really gonna tell me to leave? He was challenging our father to ask him to leave. And our dad, ever the kind soul, told him of course not. I've noticed Ryan does that a lot. Whenever he and I get into an argument and our dad tells him to stop he asks our dad a question that's specific to whatever is currently going on but under the surface it sounds like do you love me or not? And our dad caves to him every single time. So Ryan opened up his book, and started asking for help on the first page he saw. I mean he literally just opened his book up to a random page, no bookmark, and asked so how do I do this? Without even reading what was on the page. My dad mouthed to me that he was sorry. I was in complete disbelief. Ryan gets to see our dad every day of his life. He gets to eat two meals a day with him, three on weekends unless he's at his mom's. They watch TV and go to the movies together. They go on hikes. 80% of my dad's conversations with me revolve around the latest activities he and Ryan did. I get one shared dinner and what was supposed to be three hours a week alone with our dad. Three hours. And Ryan couldn't even let me have that. I started formulating a plan to text my mom and ask her to call me in five minutes and make up an excuse for me to come home. But then I thought, why? Why should I care about sparing my dad's feelings or saving myself from embarrassment? Neither of them give a shit about my feelings anyway. It feels like I'm expected to fall in line and be patient and try to understand how hard it is for Ryan to share our dad. And I've done that over and over again. But Ryan will not give me the same respect and I don't feel like being walked all over anymore. I'm tired of it. So I just started packing my things up. My dad quietly asked me to please not leave. Ryan let out an amused scoff and asked seriously? He was enjoying the moment. I didn't say a word. I just grabbed my stuff and walked out. My dad followed me to my car, thankfully we took my car so I didn't have to call one of my friends or an Uber for a ride. He said he was sorry and that he swears he didn't know Ryan would show up. I know he's telling the truth. But he should have told Ryan to leave. I know he's in a difficult position. I know he's terrified of making Ryan feel unloved or replaced by me. But I don't care anymore. I don't care about Ryan's feelings. I'm tired of being mature and understanding. I'm tired of being told to try to have empathy for him, to think about what he's going through. I don't care. He doesn't care about me. Why should I care about him? I told my dad to really think about what just happened. Ryan tracked his location and drove an hour away from home because he couldn't stand the idea of me finally getting some alone time with our dad. Am I the crazy one? Is that not completely inappropriate and insane for someone to do? He said he'll tell Ryan that he can't do this again but asked if I would just come back inside this time. I told him no. I said he can go in there and help Ryan study for the test he didn't even really sign up to take. I wasn't gonna sit there and play nice and bite my tongue for the millionth time. I'm over it. I told him that he can have Ryan take him back to my house to pick up his car and not to wait for me to get home and not to dare tell my mom what happened if she was still there. I left and drove around for a bit. 
I called Bree to see if I could still go over but she didn't answer. I found out later that they were taking a practice test at the time. I called Josh but he didn't answer. I didn't want to go home and see my dad and Ryan show up to get his car so I went to the park and sat at a picnic table. I tried to study but I couldn't focus. My mind was stuck on what happened at the library and how angry I was about the whole thing. Some more shit went down at the park that I don't feel comfortable enough talking about here, nothing to do with Ryan or my dad. But it made my day even worse and I was just kind of a mess mentally. Josh ended up calling me back and I went to his house and I just vented about the whole day. He says I need to stop seeing Ryan completely because all Ryan does is get in my head and cause me misery. Then he said I'm so focused on being angry at Ryan showing up to ruin my time with my dad that I don't even realize the severity of the situation I was in at the park. And I realized he was right. I've let Ryan's animosity towards me consume my thoughts. Why am I letting this guy affect my mindset so much? My dad called me a couple times that night to talk but I didn't answer. I was with my friends at the time and I honestly didn't want to talk about it. We ended up texting briefly. I was kind of a jerk to him because I was so mad but he did acknowledge what Ryan did was wrong and he apologized for not asking him to leave which made me feel a little better. I still wish he would have told Ryan to leave then and there. I know that Ryan is the kid he raised and I'm just the kid he met a few months ago so I would never expect him to choose me over Ryan. But I can't help but wish he would choose to side with me just one time. He and I have talked since then and things are better between us but I honestly don't know how much more of this I can take. I feel like I'm about to crack. Update 11, The End Ryan won. I wrote those two words three days ago. It's all I could stomach to write at the time. I wanted to just disappear and abandon this account because I didn't want to recount my failure but I do feel like there are several people here who genuinely care and I don't want to let anyone else down. Now that it's been a few days and the initial wave of emotions has passed I can explain what happened. Consider this my final rant slash vent slash post and thank you in advance for hearing me out one last time. I went to my dad's house for dinner on Saturday night. I know everyone told me to stop going. I knew all of you were right but I went again anyway because it means so much to my dad. He never guilt tripped me into going. He hasn't tried to force Ryan and I to be together since January. It was my choice to go to dinner every week. He does so much for me and never asks for anything in return other than letting him have one dinner a week with me at his house. To be fair to my dad I never did tell him how much I was hurting or the true extent of Ryan's behavior. I thought I would get a chance to pull him aside after dinner and talk to him about how I'd been feeling but that moment never came, at least not in the way I had hoped. During dinner Ryan started up again, like he always does. My dad said we had to celebrate me being done with the SAT and Ryan asked why we would celebrate when we don't even know if I did well yet. I was so fed up with his rude comments. We started arguing back and forth while our dad was trying to get us both to stop and continue dinner. If I'm being completely honest it wasn't even the worst that Ryan has ever been to me. Not even close. But I think after the library incident I had mostly checked out of this entire scenario and this was just the final push. Our argument got to the point where I said I could be doing a million other things at the moment but I was there trying to have a dinner with the two of them. Ryan shouted back asking me if I'm so miserable there then why wasn't I off doing those things. I was getting ready to just really let him have it but then it was as if a switch flipped in my head and I realized that he's right. Why was I wasting my time trying to make this work when Ryan is so dead set on not allowing me to be in our father's life? Why was I fighting for a father who can't even stand up to his own son for me? I looked at our dad and told him I can't do this anymore. I told him every time I come over I spend an hour driving to his house mentally preparing myself to go to war with Ryan and trying to convince myself that this time will be different. And afterwards I spend an hour driving back home feeling like a complete idiot forever thinking things would change. This whole experience is turning me into someone that I'm not. I've become someone who is angry, lashing out at the wrong people. Someone who can't focus when I'm at school and work because I'm constantly thinking about this situation and what I can do to make it better or what I should have said or done when reflecting on everything. My grade in one of my classes slipped and I had to beg my teacher to let me redo an important assignment because I was too distracted to do it right the first time. I took the SAT this past Saturday and I feel like I did good but not as great as I could have if I was in a better headspace. It's just too much. I know that at the end of the day none of that is directly Ryan's fault. It's mine for letting him get into my head. But I also know that the best thing I can do for myself is walk away from the whole situation. I told my dad that he is so scared to hurt Ryan and not make him feel replaced that he's letting him treat me like shit right in front of him and he doesn't do anything. He said he does discipline him and I said clearly he's not doing enough because Ryan's always the same. He tried to approach me and I told him not to. I didn't want him to hug me or tell me that he was sorry. Because I knew if he did he would know exactly what to say and he would convince me to give it just one more try. The truth is that I'm so pathetically desperate for him to love and accept me that I allowed Ryan to tear me down piece by piece because I convinced myself it was worth the pain and I could get through it eventually. But it's not worth it anymore and Ryan has stripped me down to the bone. I don't want him to have a hold over me anymore. Ryan huffed and rolled his eyes. I said I'm done, bro which pissed him off even more. For context I always call other guys man or bro just out of habit. 
I've always made a conscious effort not to call Ryan bro to avoid this exact situation but I just slipped in the moment. He shouted that he's not my fucking bro. I told him that he's right. He's not. I admit I got cocky and told him that he missed out because I know I'm a damn good friend and I would have been the best brother he could have ever had. I would have had his back through anything. I took out the credit card and house key my dad gave me and left it on the table and told him again that I was leaving and I wasn't ever coming back. Him and Ryan both followed me to the door. I was walking away. I told myself I needed to be the bigger person just one last time. But Ryan was relentless. He shouted for me to stop being dramatic and to stop playing the victim. Our dad was telling Ryan to stop talking but of course it did nothing. He was telling me to wait and to just stay so he and I could talk. I just wanted to leave but Ryan kept following me and antagonizing me about running away. I made it to the front door and Ryan, who was right behind me, said you'll come crawling back in a week and I turned around and swung. I know it makes me a coward to swing on an unsuspecting person. I know I lost any moral high ground I may have had when I did it. I swear I just wanted to leave. But he just wouldn't leave me the hell alone. Ryan fell to the ground and looked completely stunned that I'd actually hit him. The disappointed look on my dad's face was worse. I thought it would make me happy to hit Ryan, to finally shut him up. But it didn't. It made me feel worse. All I really felt in that moment was overwhelming sadness because I knew that the second that punch connected my relationship with my bio dad was really over. My dad went to help Ryan back up and I told Ryan that he wins. I told him he's an only child again so stay out of my town and just leave me alone. He didn't say anything. He didn't try to hit me back. He didn't laugh or smirk or mock me. He just, stared at me. My dad tried again to stop me from leaving but I told him the same applied to him. I said goodbye to him for the last time and walked out. I managed to make it two thirds of the way home pretending like I was okay and fighting back tears. But on that last stretch of road it suddenly hit me like a truck and I cried the rest of the way home. When I got there I waited in my car until the redness in my eyes was completely gone and it wasn't obvious I'd just been crying. I walked inside and my mom came from the kitchen and was surprised that I was home so early. I said hi to her and she instantly asked what was wrong. I'd cow she does it. She always knows when something is wrong with me no matter how well I hide it. But I didn't want to ruin her night so I figured I would just tell her in the morning. I tried to lie and tell her nothing happened and I was just a bit tired from the drive. She made me look her in the face and asked me what happened. And I started crying again. And I know it's a bit childish but I just really wanted my mom in that moment. We went to the living room and I told my mom all about how Ryan won't allow me to have a relationship with our dad and how my dad is too scared of hurting him to stop him. I hadn't told her most of the things that Ryan had said and done up to that point because I knew she would be angry at him and my dad if she knew the full story. She told me that I don't have to go there anymore if it's just causing me pain and stress. All I could think and say to her was that I really wanted it to work. And I did. I wanted it to work so bad. I ended up texting my friends in our group chat and told them I wasn't going to be seeing Ryan or my dad anymore. They all blocked Ryan on Instagram and Snapchat except for Austin. He had to return a game he borrowed so a couple days later he went to the city with his girlfriend, left the game on the front porch and sent Ryan a picture of it on the porch with a middle finger emoji and then he blocked him too. I know that's not the most mature response but I'd be lying if I said it didn't make me feel good to know my friends all had my back. The next day when I got out of the shower I heard my mom raising her voice at someone so I quickly got dressed and saw my dad was at the front door. I didn't approach and he couldn't see me from downstairs but I listened to part of their argument. She was refusing to let him in because I had told her the night before that I didn't want to see or speak to him. It was just back and forth of him wanting to come talk to me and my mom saying no and that he and Ryan aren't welcome in our home anymore. He eventually said he's my son and my mom told him that he doesn't get to say that because a father would advocate for his child and would have put a stop to Ryan's behavior months ago. He was getting emotional and telling her he's in a difficult spot in the middle of both of us. She said she knows but that he constantly lets me down because he knows I'm the more mature one but that I'm not okay and I haven't been okay for a while and he fails to see that. She said that I'm only 17 years old but he acts like I'm a grown man and Ryan is just my bratty kid brother that I have to put up with. The last thing I heard was her saying that I don't have to and will not be putting up with Ryan's behavior ever again. At that point, I went back to my room and put my airpods in because I didn't want to hear the rest. My dad did call me. I'm not sure if it was when he was still there or if he'd just left. I didn't answer. My mom came up a bit after and told me he stopped by and said that she told him not to show up at my school or work. She also said she told him I would reach out if I ever wanted to talk but she reassured me that I don't have to if I don't want to. I just want to move on. He sent me a bunch of text messages and left half a dozen voicemails. I've only listened to parts of some of them before I turn them off. I know I have to block his number. But I also know that once I do that it means this part of my life is well and truly over. I always thought that when it came to fight or flight that I was a fighter. And I did fight. I fought so hard. But I don't have any more fight in me. Not for this. Regardless of what's happened, I stand by everything I said about my father in the past. He's a good man. He has a kind heart. 
His only fault in all this is that he loves his son most in the world and wants to protect his feelings. And if that's his biggest character flaw I think he'll be okay. I wanted him in my life, but the truth is I don't need him. Ryan does. I don't know what goes on in Ryan's head and as of a few days ago I officially could not care less. But I do hope he grows and matures someday. Not for me. Not for his dad. For himself. Because the person he is now is not going to get very far in life. I know there are several people who are sure that I twisted events or omitted details to make myself seem faultless while demonizing Ryan. That is not the case. I know that everything I've posted is true. Ryan knows all of the things that he's done even if he truly believes that he's justified in his actions. And that's really all that matters. I also know that a lot of people believed me to be an invader who showed up and disrupted Ryan's perfect life. Well now the invader is gone and Ryan gets what he wants, just like I'm sure he always has. Maybe someday when I'm older I can have a relationship with Ryan's dad. Or maybe I won't care in a year. Maybe he won't either. Maybe I'll end up like my uncle, just another mystery in their family history. Another relative that no one has heard from in 20 years. For anyone who has supported me with advice and followed my posts from the beginning, and I know there are quite a few of you, I'd like to truly, thank you. Getting to vent, get opinions and perspective, even on Ryan's possible POV, and read words of encouragement really did mean a lot to me. And I'm sorry if I wasted your time with reading my posts just to not see this through. I'm sorry that I couldn't tough it out. Maybe Ryan would have come around if I'd have held out a little longer. I'm sorry that I'm not as strong as I thought I was. All I can say is that I'm not a quitter but I do know that it's time to walk away. I ignored the signs for weeks. I should have known after New Year's Eve that it was never going to work out. I deluded myself into thinking that I was going to have a happy ending. I kept trying to appease Ryan and his dad by being the perfect, patient, understanding person that I thought I needed to be to find a place in their family. But the truth is that person is a doormat and it's time I stop worrying about them and start focusing on putting myself first again. I don't care about protecting Ryan's anonymity anymore so feel free to repost this anywhere. I know it's petty but a small part of me hopes Ryan will see these posts one day and realize how awful he was to me. I'm not perfect. I can admit I was self-centered in the beginning and only cared about how the situation was great for me without even thinking about how it impacted his life. I admit I talk shit about Ryan both online and to my family and friends but it was only because of the things he said and did to me. I went into this excited at the idea that I was gonna have a brother. After our first meeting was a disaster I thought, well my friends all say that siblings don't always get along so I just have to give him time to warm up to me. When I was with him I really did try to get along with him. But I now see that he wasn't going to stop until I was gone. I went half my life without a father. Even though it's not the outcome I wanted, I know that I can do it again. I'm choosing to walk away now because I want to remember him as the man who never gave up to be in my life. I want to remember him as the man who loved me before he even met me. I know that if I stay it's going to get worse. I'm going to get worse. And I don't want that to be the way that he remembers me. This whole situation has caused me heartache and opened up some old wounds that I thought had healed. But I have my mom and my friends to help get me through it. I wouldn't change anything that happened. I'm still glad I got to meet him. He gave me a Christmas memory I will cherish for the rest of my life. But in the long run it was just never going to work and I've accepted that. I'm not okay right now, but I will be in time. Thank you again for reading, listening, and caring about some random kid on the internet. I wish you all the best in life. Take care of yourselves. Update 12, we talked. I've always acknowledged that I overwrite everything especially when my posts are more about my thoughts and feelings and less of an actual update on what's happened but tbh I'm posting these on my own profile, not any other subreddit, so if you're here I'm assuming you have an actual interest in my rambling so I won't apologize for writing too much anymore. I know a lot of people felt strongly about my last post and that's my fault. As time went on I used this space as a way to let out my frustrations. It became only about the bad stuff. I never told you guys about how my dad messaged me every single morning just to say hi and on school days to wish me a good day at school. That always started my day off on a good note even if the day before had been crap. I never wrote about the time he asked me what my dream vacation would be and thought he was being sly about planning on making it happen. I never mentioned how excited he was to be able to be the one to take me to my first MLB game whenever baseball season actually started up. There were so many moments I never shared and that's why I stand by everything I said about him being a good and kind man. He made several mistakes in bringing me into his life and I won't make excuses for him on that. But I knew then, just like I know now, that he is not a coward or a bad father. A coward is someone who can't admit when they are wrong and apologize. A bad father is someone who learns he has a child and chooses to remain blissfully ignorant. My dad is not those things. I've been unfortunate enough to see true bad parenting in some of my friends' lives and I've read dozens of horror stories here on Reddit. My dad is not a bad father. He's just a man who couldn't quite adapt to and take control of a new situation as quickly as he probably should have. No one in this scenario is without fault or sin. My dad, Ryan, Josh, my mom, and myself have all made mistakes here. We're all flawed. That just makes us human. 
None of us should be defined or labeled forever by the mistakes we made in this unusual situation. We all deserve a chance to grow and become better people for ourselves and the ones we love. I didn't expect to ever be posting again. TBH my plan was to leave my last post up for 24 hours and then delete my account. That's how broken I was. I didn't respond to a single person publicly or privately so please don't think I ignored you or that your words fell on deaf ears. I did read every single comment and private message and the amount of support I received from all of you was incredible. There were a couple nights where I was hitting those low points again and I would open up those comments and see that there were so many people rooting for me to get past this and succeed. It may sound silly but it really did make a difference to me and helped me keep my chin up during the harder days. Writing my feelings down has helped a lot as well. It helps me keep track of where I'm at and how much I've improved. My mom told me that when she was my age she used to journal a lot and I should consider getting my emotions out that way. I admitted I had been writing, I left out the part about posting it all online, and that it's been therapeutic for me. I had spent so much of the last few months trying to find ways to connect with Ryan and our dad. But at 17 I'm somehow still finding ways that I'm similar to my mom too which is nice. I wish I could sit here and tell you that the last few weeks were a breeze. I would love to tell you that I was thriving and living my best life after cutting off Ryan and our dad. But that would be a lie. I missed my dad every single day. I doubted myself, wondering if I had made the right choice in walking away. If I can sidebar for a second I'd like to tell a quick story. When I first started kindergarten I hated going to school. I was that kid that cried when his mom left. I was very introverted and didn't want to talk to the other kids or my teacher. I was scared and miserable, a far cry from the sociable person I'd like to believe I've become since then. I'm not sure of the exact day but it was either after the second or third day of school that my, adoptive, dad sat me down, gave me advice about giving the other kids a chance, and told me that all I needed was one good day. If I had one good day I would see that everything would be okay and I could do it again tomorrow. The next day at school we got paired up for a drawing activity. That was the day I met my future best friend Josh. I vaguely remember we drew monsters fighting each other which was not at all the assignment but it was fun. When I told my mom and dad about it after school my dad asked me if I had a good day to which I excitedly told him yes. I remember he smiled and told me now do it again tomorrow. I know that story might not seem relevant right now but I want people to know what an incredible father my dad was. As much as it pains me to admit, I don't have very many memories of lessons that he taught me because I was so young when he died. But that's one lesson I've always tried to put into practice whenever I'm sad. I tell myself that I just need one good day to remind myself that I can still be happy, I can still smile and that I'll be alright in time. That's what I was aiming for after I walked away from Ryan and our dad. One good day to show me that I was really going to be okay. The last few weeks haven't been easy. While I felt a huge weight lift off of my shoulders right away, it was hard coming to terms with the fact that my second chance at having a dad was over before it could really begin. I considered anonymously sending my post to Ryan or my bio dad but I felt like that would be manufacturing drama and trying to force an apology and I didn't want that. My dad was constantly calling, texting, and leaving voicemails. I never replied to any of them, not out of spite but just to protect myself. He said a multitude of things. Ryan is working on himself and taking therapy seriously. We can have a separate relationship for real this time. Please don't give up on me because I'll never give up on you. All the things I wanted to hear but just a bit too late. It just became too much. On Saturday I had an amazing night with my friends. But around 11.30 that night my dad messaged me again and I went right back to that sad version of myself. This was the second time since I walked away that I'd finally had my one good day and seeing his messages brought me back to that bad place. So I finally worked up the courage to send him a lengthy final text, because when have I ever been a man a few words, right? Thanking him for everything he had done for me but that I was done being a second string son and to please just leave me alone. After that I blocked his number. In my mind I wasn't doing it to be hurtful. I just felt like I needed to close that chapter of my life and move on. Even if you have read all of my posts you'll never know the full story. Ryan was a nightmare I couldn't wake up from and while I posted about the biggest moments here we did have smaller negative interactions in between that I never posted about. It all added up, wore me down and I didn't even realize how truly unhappy I was until I walked away. I've reread a lot of what I wrote, including the stuff I never posted, and I don't even recognize that person. Specifically with my last post here, I feel like I sound so pathetic in it. I really hit a low point that I will never allow myself to reach again for anyone. Even though there was obvious pain in my heart over losing my bio dad I felt like myself again shockingly soon once I cut them both off. Not having to see Ryan or worry about his next move was exactly what I needed for my own sanity to return. Speaking of Ryan, I hadn't heard from or talked to him for weeks but I did get an Instagram message from one of his friends who reached out to me about him. They said he was upset about what happened with our dad and that I should reach out to him. They were weirdly pushy about trying to get me to call Ryan and talk to him. I actually thought it was an April Fool's Day joke at first because my friends and I had been pranking each other all day but then I felt guilty because I know my friends would never do something like that because they knew how devastated I was about the whole thing. 
I messaged Ryan's friend back giving him our dad's business number to reach out to him if he was concerned about Ryan's well-being and left it at that because I really did not want to go down that rabbit hole again. The very next night after I blocked my dad I was working my usual shift at the theater. I had just finished switching a soda cartridge in the lobby and I see Ryan walking into the building. He knows my weekend schedule is always the same so he knew I was almost off work. I was instantly fuming. I walked up to him and told him to get the fuck out. He started to say he didn't come to fight but I cut him off and told him I don't give a fuck what he came here for and reminded him that I told him to leave me alone. I was livid. I was finally getting back to my normal self and he had the audacity to just walk into my workplace like nothing. My manager came up and asked what was going on. Surprisingly Ryan said he started it and he was leaving. And he left. Unfortunately it didn't matter to my manager because I still got a write up and sent home 10 minutes early for causing a disturbance in the lobby, which is fair because I was the one yelling but it still sucked to get reprimanded at work. I was walking to my car feeling like crap because I've never gotten a write up or sent home because of my behavior before. About three spots ahead of my car was Ryan standing beside his truck, obviously waiting for me. I thought is he fucking kidding me? He didn't know how to take a hint. I walked past him to go to my car and told him to fuck off before he could say anything. After I passed him he said I'm sorry, Caleb which shocked the hell out of me. Not even because he said sorry but because for the first time ever he called me by my name. My actual name. Not pretty boy or, name of my town, or popcorn scooper or any of the other various nicknames he'd come up with for me since we met. He said he knows I don't owe him anything but asked if I would just hear him out anyway. We ended up having a very long conversation. I've summarized most of it here but I'm sure there are things I may have forgotten. I stood opposite him while he sat on the bed of his truck because TBH I didn't know if his apology was an act and if he just waiting for an opportunity to swing at me. He started off by saying his therapist suggested he write me a letter but that's cringe and he'd rather just talk to me in person. He said he fucked up and he knows that he fucked up. He went into some personal stuff regarding why he was so relentless and aggressive towards me. I won't go into detail on that because I believe he said those things in confidence. But after that he told me that he doesn't hate me. He just hates what I represent. I asked what he meant because that made no sense to me. He said he knows no one would ever replace him in his dad's eyes but that when he sees me he can't help but think I'm the son his dad wanted and that makes him jealous. He said I'm smart, hardworking, annoyingly nice, and I look and act more like him. Even though he was complimenting me he still sounded so frustrated, but more at himself instead of me. You all told me in the beginning that he'd been comparing the two of us but I never really saw it until he said it. I just thought he hated me for existing, plain and simple. While it in no way excuses his behavior, I couldn't help but feel for him. At this point I felt more at ease because he was being so open and honest. So I sat beside him on the bed of his truck and told him I have no interest in being the 2.0 version of our dad. I'm my own person. All I wanted was a relationship with our dad and to know him and have him know me. I admitted to Ryan that I was jealous of him too and that I would trade in all of the similarities I share with our dad in exchange for the childhood with him that Ryan had. I know more than a few of you said I was lucky that he didn't raise me, because I would have turned out just like Ryan. But I don't think it was extravagant gifts and lack of punishment that made Ryan act the way he did. From what I could gather after our talk and what happened a couple days later, that didn't start until his parents divorced. I think the reason behind his abhorrent behavior towards me was just classic fear and insecurity, something that I think everyone has to deal with at some point in life. I told him whenever I was with our dad his favorite topic to talk about was always Ryan. Ryan said the same thing, that when it was the two of them I was always the biggest topic. Hearing so much about each other probably didn't help with us already disliking one another, but I think our dad is just the kind of person who loves talking about his kids. He did tell me once that he loves being a dad and it's been the best part of his life. Yes, I know he didn't get it right a lot in this matter. But his heart was always in the right place. Ryan and I realize that we actually know quite a bit about each other and what our lives were like, not because we ever talked to each other but because our dad told us things about one another. Ryan made a casual joke saying if we actually got along and told each other stuff our dad wouldn't even know what to talk about anymore. He actually said my dad at first but then corrected himself to our dad which might not seem like a huge deal but he's never said that before. He's always said my dad, my grandpa, my grandma, etc. until then he'd never acknowledged me as part of his family. He told me that after I left their house the last time that I was there he got grounded for the first time since his parents split up. He was only allowed to go to school and back home and he wasn't allowed to play any of his games for two weeks. And at first he blamed me because he didn't think it was fair that he got grounded when I was the one that punched him. He says he was in denial about all his behavior leading up to that night being the main problem because he didn't want to be the bad guy. But after his punishment ended he realized I really wasn't coming back and he knew he had messed up badly. I told him I would be lying to him if I apologized and said I regretted punching him, because I didn't. But I did tell him the truth that it didn't make me feel any better and I wasn't celebrating it then or now. He asked if I changed my number. I told him I didn't and that I had just blocked him weeks ago and our dad yesterday, at the time. He said our dad brought it up that morning thinking I had changed my number because his calls weren't going through anymore. 
He said our dad pretends like he's okay in front of him but Ryan can see that he's not. And he hates that it's his fault. Ryan said that it's no secret that he wasn't happy when our dad found out about me and that he did want me gone but that our dad can't just pretend I don't exist now because that's not the kind of father that he is. Ryan then told me that what hurts the most was that our dad doesn't look at him the same anymore. When he brought it up our dad told him that he will always love Ryan but that it would take time to forgive him. Worse than that he told Ryan that he knows he failed both of us as a father and he was sorry for that. He was taking the lion's share of the blame. That made me feel horrible because I didn't want to make him feel that way. We all played a part in ending up where we did. Ryan and I were both to blame as well. Ryan for his antagonistic behavior, and me for being selfish and pushing our dad away. I realize now that I absolutely needed a break from both of them but to cast my dad aside forever instead of just trying to talk about it and find a solution was cruel and hurtful when he has shown me nothing but kindness and love from day one. And like I said I never did tell him everything and how much it was affecting me. He thought it was just snippy comments here and there. I know why I pushed him away. I knew it then, even if I was too embarrassed to admit it to anyone. I was so scared that he would decide he didn't want me in his life. When I hit his precious baby boy I thought that was just going to be the beginning of the downfall of my relationship with my dad. I guess I felt like I had to beat him to the punch in ending the relationship, because I convinced myself it would be easier if I was the one who walked away instead of being left behind. But he wasn't going to leave me behind because I wasn't perfect and I lost my cool. He showed me that in his calls and texts afterwards but I let my fear get the best of me. Ryan admitted that he really did want to like me when we were supposed to meet but when I got there he just couldn't. He said we have nothing in common because I'm an outgoing jock and he's just not. I'm really not a jock. I'm not sure why Ryan thinks that. If we're going by stereotypes I'm much closer to a nerd or academic than an athlete. I told him that if nothing else we both love our dad and want him to be happy and maybe that was enough common ground to start off with. I also told him I have all kinds of friends and that common interests aren't a necessity to get along with someone. At that point he said that he doesn't have real friends like mine. He doesn't have someone like Josh that he can rely on for anything. He doesn't have the kind of friends who will have his back the way mine did after that night. I did bring up that his friend reached out to me on Instagram on his behalf but it didn't seem like he wanted to talk about that. He asked if he could be honest about something and told me that when he was on bed rest after his appendectomy that me and my friends were the only ones who showed up to see how he was doing and if he needed anything, the only ones who hung out with him while he was bored at home. All of his friends were too busy to even just drop by and he invited a girl he had a crush on but she told him she would only go if he bought her something cute to wear for him which just instantly turned him off to her. I didn't really know what to say so I just told him that sucks and he deserves someone who wants him for him and not gifts or his money. He said more that essentially boiled down to that he feels like he has friendships out of convenience and proximity and that he doesn't see himself sticking with his friend group after high school ends. Finally, he told me what he had been working up to. His 17th birthday was in a couple days and our dad was going to make pizza, Ryan's favorite, for dinner in their special pizza oven they have in the backyard. He told Ryan he could invite a couple friends but Ryan told me he'd rather have me there with them. He said I could even bring Josh if that made me feel more comfortable. He admitted it was selfish to ask but that he doesn't want to be the reason our dad is sad all the time. I asked him the day and time and told him I would think about it. I made it clear to him that if I did decide to go that I will not go back to fighting with him. I left that all behind when I walked out of their house the last time I was there. I told him that if I did go and he changed his mind after I was there to just tell me and I would leave. It didn't have to be a fight or argument. He swore he wouldn't change his mind this time. At that point my mom called to ask where I was. I didn't even realize it but I had been talking to Ryan for an hour past the end of my shift. So I told her I was on my way home. Ryan asked if we're supposed to shake hands or bump forearms, he's seen Josh and I do that a lot. I told him I think I was just gonna go to my car tonight if that's okay. I wasn't really ready for physical contact with him yet. He said he hoped to see me in a couple days. As I was walking away he called out to me to apologize again, it's really weird hearing him say my name tbh, and to say that it was all his own shit that he had to deal with and that he's still dealing with. That really stuck with me and I think that's what ultimately convinced me to go. I'd give he's seeing the same therapist we saw together but whoever he's seeing must have really gotten through to him. I've seen Ryan manipulate our father's emotions many times. I know what his face looks like when he's just looking for sympathy. I know the inflection of his voice when he's putting on his poor me act. This wasn't it. He wasn't performing during our talk. Even though he was being open and honest I could see that all of it was hard for him to do. He did his best to maintain eye contact even though he was showing his vulnerability. There were a few times I could hear the nervousness in his voice when he was struggling to get the words out. This wasn't Prince Ryan, the spoiled and angry rich boy I'd come to know in the last few months. It was just Ryan, a 16-year-old kid who messed up and was now swallowing his pride to try to make amends. I couldn't help but respect that. I told Ryan that I changed my mind and I was sorry about punching him, and I meant it. I guess seeing him show so much humility thawed me out a bit. I've always said that I knew Ryan wasn't a one-note asshole and I could see the good in him when he interacted with other people, but this was the first time that goodness was directed towards me. 
I realized we're not going to get anywhere if I don't try to let go of the anger and hurt he caused me, and admit that I made mistakes too. We said goodnight to each other and I went home. Just to be clear, Ryan's birthday already passed. It was on Tuesday. So while I've always appreciated advice, it is not needed in this case as the event has already happened. I'm not trying to keep anyone in suspense so I'll say here that there was no drama. It was not an act or trick by Ryan. The dinner went very well. I'll let you guys know how that went tomorrow but I've got plans with my friends in a bit so I can't write out everything at the moment. Update 13, Second Chance. Second Chances. There's a quote from a song I really like that says if it weren't for second chances, we'd all be alone. I guess with Ryan it would be closer to the 30 second chance but the essence of the quote still applies. I wasn't actually alone, but I had lost a whole side of my family that I had just discovered, people that I didn't really want to lose or spend my life without knowing. I know it's just blood and shared DNA, but I still wanted to have a connection to my dad and grandparents. I'm also still open to having a biological brother somewhere down the line too if things continue to look up. After my talk with Ryan I went home and told my mom what happened. She actually thought I was joking at first when I told her all the things Ryan said, minus the private stuff I mentioned in my last post. She asked if I was sure he was being sincere and I said I'm positive that he was. I went back and forth on whether or not to go. I weighed the pros and cons in my head. I'm not completely naive. I know Ryan's motives in inviting me were partly self-serving, but TBH so were mine by the end of everything last month. In the beginning I was eager to meet Ryan and be his friend. But as time went on it became more about trying to just be cordial solely because I didn't want to lose my dad. And even now it's not at all easy to just forget everything Ryan did, but I did want my dad back in my life. I thought about posting here the day after I talked with Ryan. But honestly I didn't want anyone to give me advice. I don't mean to say you all haven't been helpful because you have been so many times in the past. But when I really thought about it, I didn't want to be swayed one way or another about whether to go or not. I didn't want to be given any influence on how to approach things if I did go. I wanted it to be a genuine attempt between Ryan and myself. So in the end, I decided to go alone. Both my mom and Josh wanted to go but I told them I needed to do this on my own. I promised my mom that I wasn't getting my hopes up and if it went sideways I would come straight home and that would be the end of it and I would be okay. I know she still didn't want me to go but I think it was fear of me getting hurt again over anything else. I got to the house a little early and knocked. Ryan answered the door. He actually looked happy to see me and said he was glad I made it. It's pretty funny because all I could think at the time was that his greeting was literally the nicest thing he had ever said to me. Before that I'm pretty sure it was just hey without any nickname after it. I gave him a birthday card with a PlayStation gift card in it. I don't usually like giving gift cards as a gift because I feel like it's impersonal but I was torn between not wanting to put too much effort in and not wanting to show up to a birthday celebration without a gift. I asked where our dad was and Ryan said he was at the store picking up ingredients for the pizzas. I've probably seen too many movies because the quiet empty house and dad not being there did make me a bit uneasy. For just a second I was honestly a bit worried Ryan might have brought me there just to kill me, smiley face. He asked if I wanted to play some games while we wait for dad. I told him sure just as long as it's nothing competitive, so he put on a game where he and I were on the same team for once. It was a bit awkward being alone with him at first but within a couple matches I got the hang of the game and we were fine. Conversation was minimal. He just mentioned what he did for his birthday with his mom and talked about how much better the pizza cooked in their oven is than regular pizza. I believe it's called a wood fire oven. Eventually our dad got home and yelled out for Ryan and asking if that was my car outside. He walked into the game room and we locked eyes. I had a whole speech planned out. I had talking points in my head for when he came home but for some reason when I saw him all I could muster out was hi. I forgot everything else I wanted to say. He came up to me and hugged me and honestly, it was the best hug of my life. He was trying not to cry and apologizing for everything and saying how happy he was to see me. He asked if I came to talk and I told him actually Ryan invited me to have dinner with them. He went over to hug Ryan and said, thank you. Ryan said he was sorry to our dad for causing him so much pain and that this had been his mistake to fix. They had their own moment before my dad brought me into their hug. He was so overjoyed. I wish everyone at least once in their life could feel what his face told me he felt in that moment. But I'm not gonna lie, as nice of a moment as it was I was still a bit uncomfortable being so physically close to Ryan so I made a joke about being promised pizza if I came so we all went outside and it was a bit quiet at first but within a short time the tension eased and we were having casual conversations and a nice meal. We even shared a few laughs. For the first time there was no fighting during dinner. We told him that we'd talked and I think he was really proud of both of us for that. He was so happy. Ryan's aunt and grandparents on his mom's side FaceTimed him to wish him a happy birthday so he went inside to talk to them for a bit. While he was gone my dad and I finally got to talk. I told him how much it hurt that he never stood up for me. He looked ashamed and told me he was sorry and that he thought it was just small comments at dinner, which from his perspective is true. I never told him about any of the private moments between Ryan and 1 and 1M sure Ryan would not have told him anything either. 
He said that he thought that I was brushing off those comments and he didn't know how badly it was affecting me but that no matter what he should have protected me. He assured me from now on no one gets a free pass to disrespect me in front of him, not even Ryan. I asked him why he never gave Ryan actual punishment. He told me that he could tell me his reasoning but that he didn't want me to think he was making an excuse because he knows there is no excuse for his failure. He said when he and Ryan's mom told Ryan that they were getting a divorce he didn't handle it well at all. He accused them of not loving him and breaking their family up. It broke our dad's heart so he started overcompensating by showering Ryan with affection and leniency when he acted out. He said he got so used to treating Ryan a certain way that it just became normal and natural to him. He reiterated that it's not an excuse and he should have learned a lot quicker that he now has two boys and Ryan won't be given leniency for his bad behavior anymore. He asked me for just one more chance to show me that he's changed. I'm really hoping he never has to prove it, at least with Ryan. But of course I told him I would give him that chance. This was our first fight and while I feel I was completely justified in walking away when I did, it didn't have to be forever like I thought. If Ryan and our dad are both willing to admit their mistakes and try to be better why wouldn't I give it another shot? My dad made me promise him that I wouldn't hide my feelings from him and that I would tell him if I wasn't okay. His reasoning was that it's not my job to worry about him or protect his feelings, it's his job to worry about and protect me. He said that I'm a strong young man and that he knows I can handle a lot but that I don't always have to try to be an adult about everything and that it was okay to just let myself be a kid for a few more years. Hearing him say that got to me. I was never an emotional person before all this. After my adoptive dad died I sort of became numb to emotional pain. It was like nothing could hurt more than that so as I got older I just started pushing all my feelings aside and prioritizing logic over emotion. But I think I inherited my bio dad's sensitivity gene and meeting him somehow activated it because I've cried more times in the past 4 months than I have since I was a child. But I'm no longer embarrassed about that because it feels so liberating to not keep all the pain bottled up anymore. When it was time for me to leave they both walked me to my car. Our dad promised both of us that he wouldn't try to force us to hang out, not even just for a weekly dinner. He said we could tell him if we were ready to do any group activities and we didn't have to be ready at the same time, we could each tell him separately if we reached that point. I told our dad that while I'm willing to open the door again that I'm not going to be driving to see him every week. My focus is going to be on school until the school year is over. Once summer hits I'll have a lot more free time and we can see about spending more time together. He understood and agreed. I wished Ryan a happy birthday again. He thanked me for the card and for coming. He asked if we could start over. I said yes and I offered him a forearm bump which he accepted and then I left. I won't lie, I'm still incredibly nervous that this shift in Ryan's behavior won't last. I feel bad for saying it but even though I am serious about starting with a clean slate it is really hard to look at him and not remember all the things he said and did. I think that's what's keeping me from being over the moon like I have been in the past. Mentally, I'm not the same person I was 4 months ago. I lost that part of me that was excited to have a dad and brother. But I'm cautiously optimistic that maybe things will work out. My fears and lack of excitement are something I have to deal with on my own. I do still want this to work and the vibe with both of them really felt a lot lighter so I'm willing to give them a second, and 30 second, chance. Ryan has been texting me the past few days so I guess things are looking up. He even sent me a meme about us being children of a lawyer so I think he's starting to finally see me as a brother. It's hard to explain over text, but I really do see a change in him. Well it's not even a change, honestly. It's more of him just letting go of his anger. A few months ago I said I wanted to meet the person he is to everyone else. I think I'm finally starting to get to see that person when we talk. Forgiveness is supposed to be hard, but in this situation Ryan and our dad are making it easier than it probably should be. I had given up and resigned myself to a life without my father or bio brother. But now we may just be on our way to a better outcome because Ryan took the first step to make amends. Maybe every year really does make us not just older, but wiser too. Maybe even a little kinder. It was his birthday. He could have asked our dad for anything he wanted and I know he would have gotten it. Instead he chose to give me and our dad a gift in the form of a second chance at a fatherson relationship. So I think we've hit the end of the road for now. I know I'm a hypocrite because I've said that about three times now but I really do need to take a step back and just live my life for a little bit. As I said above, I'm focusing on trying to finish off the school year strong. I don't plan on driving to the city for any visits anytime soon. My dad does want to have a longer talk in person just the two of us which I plan on doing, but even though I'm nervous to talk to him I'm sure that's gonna be fine. I think for right now I'm gonna keep my interactions with both of them mostly, if not completely, limited to text messaging. That seems to be working out for right now. One final note, because things seem to be heading in a more positive direction I am worried again that Ryan may see my posts someday. I think it's unlikely but I don't want it to undo any progress we may make so I'm making a promise to myself right now that if things continue to go well between us for the next couple of months then I will tell him about all of this the first week of July. I just don't want any of this to come back and bite me in the ass someday. I'd rather he hear it directly from me instead of being blindsided. 
I hope you all have an incredible Easter if you celebrate it and thanks again for every word of advice, support, and for sharing your own experiences with me. Maybe you'll hear from me again someday. For now I'm just gonna take life as it comes and deal with it ideally as a team with my family, both the biological and chosen members of that family. Thank you for taking this journey with me. Caleb. Update 14, Summer. This ended up being a lot more long-winded than even I imagined. It's honestly filled with a bunch of stuff that's not really necessary or all that exciting. It's strange because it doesn't feel like much has happened but reading this back has made me realize a lot of things actually have in the last few months. However, if you want to save yourself a lot of time then the next paragraph serves as a TL, DR. Hey everyone. Hope you've all been well. I know it's been a while since my last post. The past three months just flew by. I actually wanted to update around mid-June but I got a new phone and couldn't remember the password for this account. I was at my friend Josh's house yesterday, where I was when I made this account, and I saw something in his room and remembered I had used that as the password so I was able to get back into this account. I'm not sure if many people are still interested but if so I can give a not at all quick update on how things are going. If you're reading this hoping for more drama, I'm glad to disappoint as you'll find none of that here. If I had to summarize things in one word, great. In two words, really great. Thankfully I'm not here to report on anything bad. There was definitely an adjustment period and some difficult talks all around but we worked through it and we're all in a much better place now. Thought I'd give you guys an update on how everyone is doing and some stuff that's happened since my last post. Ryan. Remember when I said I was worried Ryan's change of heart wouldn't last? I'm happy to confirm that was not the case. He and I slowly talked over text. He was a bit upset early on because he said he was always the one texting me and I never texted him unless I was replying to him. That's true. I was still skeptical of him but again that was my own issue to work out. I made more of an effort to reach out to him after that. We then moved to gaming together online. It was mainly just the two of us but there were times where we played with some of my friends which I think really helped ease him back into my social circle. When the school year ended he started coming here to our town a lot to hang out with us. Sometimes we all go to the city and hang out at his house. Unfortunately the road between my town and his city is mostly just one long stretch of road so we can't really meet halfway. However, he's here a couple times every week and in our group chat so we all talk constantly. My friends are now his friends too. I mentioned above that I wanted to update around mid-June. The reason for that is because that's when I finally told Ryan about my posts. I had given myself a deadline of the first week of July but before that happened we got into a silly argument about something stupid and didn't talk to each other for two days. I know that's not a long time but we went from talking every day, we basically had a non-stop text conversation, to complete radio silence. On the third day he sent me a message asking are we still brothers? Which just really made me realize how dumb our fight was and it wasn't worth staying mad over especially when the argument had nothing to do with either of us personally. We'd never really acknowledged each other as brothers out loud before he said that. I realized then that I couldn't keep meeting up with him, laughing, and joking with him when I knew my unkind words about him were out there on the internet and there was a chance, however small, that he might stumble upon them someday. So one day I went over to his house while our dad was at work. I had put all of my posts on a flash drive because I didn't want him to read the harsh comments about him. I told him the truth that the only thing I removed was one line, if you followed my original posts you probably know what I'm referring to, that I felt should stay between me and our dad. I know that may disappoint some of you as a few people said I should be completely honest and not edit the posts but I really feel like that would be volunteering hurtful information for no reason and I'm sure it's something my dad would never want Ryan to know. I was terrified that I was about to ruin everything we'd built up to that point. I let him know it was all in the past and I didn't feel that way anymore. I was in a bad place emotionally at the time. I promised him my last two posts were after we talked and much more positive. He asked if he could read those ones so he read the we talked and second chances posts by himself while I was panic texting a few friends in the next room. He came back and handed me the flash drive. He did thank me for being honest and the nice things I said about him being genuine in his remorse, but he said he'd rather leave the rest in the past. He reminded me he said a lot of bad things to me and had made up lies about me to other people, he'd already admitted this a while back. He did make me swear that I wasn't acting or just being his friend for our dad's sake, which I did swear to because I do genuinely consider him a friend now. He swore the same and after that we just ended up watching a movie until our dad came home. We've been back to normal ever since. I did ask if he was okay with me posting an update here and he jokingly said it was only okay as long as I lied and told you guys that he now spends all his free time volunteering at homeless shelters. But in all seriousness, he's doing a lot better. At the beginning of the year I never thought that I would say it but he's my brother. I claim him and he claims me as such. I even have a nickname for him. I've recently started calling him Rye Fi because he's a huge techie slash gamer guy. He says it's a stupid name but he also told our friends that only I'm allowed to call him that when they tried to make it a group thing. I think he secretly likes it. I think the best indication of showing how far we've come in the last few months is that we can call each other names like asshole or say fuck you to each other knowing it's just jokes. Dad. Dad, Dad, Dad. 
That man has the patience of a saint. So we had our talk shortly after my last post. I somehow gathered up the strength to be honest with him about everything I went through from January to mid-March. I did make him promise not to punish Ryan and to keep it all between us which he did. After hearing everything I had to say he understood why I walked away when I did. I told him about my fears that he would decide I'm too much of a headache and just drop me from his life. He actually seemed really hurt that I felt that way. He assured me roughly 26 times that our relationship is forever and there's nothing I could ever say or do that would make him stop loving me. Since then things are mostly good. I hate to admit it but for some reason I'm holding on to some anger. I'm not really sure why but sometimes I get irritated at him over the dumbest, smallest things. These are things he shouldn't feel guilty or bad about and yet I still get mad at him. And he's so ridiculously patient with me when realistically no one could blame him if he told me to just get over it or stop making a big deal out of nothing. He just lets me berate him and then calmly tries to talk to me to find out what I'm really mad about. And I never have an answer for him because I just don't know. It got to the point where recently my mom had to sit me down and tell me that I have to know I'm being incredibly unfair to my dad when I get mad at him over little things that she knows I don't really care about. I don't deserve a dad like him honestly. It's weird because I've grown up seeing all my friends' dads as the tough love, man up, classic dad so that's what I expected him to be once I really got to know him. But my dad is almost like two different people. When he's out in public or at work he's very assertive but at the same time he's still charismatic and friendly. I've noticed that he's the kind of person that people seem to gravitate towards. He's not afraid to speak up and call people out on their BS. But with me, Ryan, and my mom he's a lot more patient and understanding. He never yells, he always listens when me or Ryan are mad at him about something even if he has to be firm that his answer is still ultimately not what we want to hear. I honestly thought he was putting on an act for me and my mom because it kind of blows my mind how patient he can be with us. But it's been long enough that I now know that that's just who he is when it comes to the people he cares about. It just makes me feel worse when I get mad at him over stupid stuff. I recently decided to see Ryan's old therapist. Ryan sold me on the idea because he told me it helped him figure out the cause of his anger and how to get past it. So I'm hoping she can work some magic and fix whatever is wrong with my brain so I won't be such a dick to my dad. Other than those moments, which really aren't that often, my dad and I are great. We see each other a lot now that summer is here. He's here every week. Sometimes we do things with Ryan. Sometimes with Ryan and my mom. But a good amount of the time it's just me and him. He took me on a weekend trip just the two of us recently which I think really helped us bond even though nothing big happened. The only bad thing about us getting closer is I can't play harmless pranks on him anymore. I used to be able to mess with him a lot in the beginning of summer. One time I went over to my dad's house for dinner and he made lobster and crab cakes so I pretended like I was allergic to shellfish and couldn't eat anything he made. I actually thought he knew I was lying because he said he had asked my mom about food allergies months ago, which I didn't know, and she never mentioned shellfish. Luckily he didn't catch on. I did tell him the truth shortly after because he started looking in his cupboards to make something else so I started to feel bad. Another night I texted my mom that my dad fed me cereal and she called him right away cause she was pissed thinking that he made me drive an hour just to eat cereal for dinner. My dad was so confused cause he had actually made a whole Italian meal and they both ended up laughing and jokingly grounding me when they realized I was messing with them. There were a few more pranks I played but my dad knows when I'm lying now so I can't get away with it anymore. As a whole things are good between us and I see him and Ryan a lot more. My dad owns his own law firm with his business partner so he can leave work or choose to work from home almost whenever he wants. He's made the drive to my town at least two times a week, usually more. So we see each other a lot more than I was expecting. But it is summer so I imagine it'll slow down once school starts again. Mom. Mom continues to be the best. I actually think the biggest adjustment out of all of us has been hers and really starting to understand she's not my only parent anymore. It's been just me and my mom for so long and now with my dad added in things are a bit different. For the 4th of July weekend I went to Josh's cousin's house for the night. We were just gonna do fireworks and hang out. Just a small group of us but Josh's cousin is 21 and has his own house with his girlfriend so he would be the oldest one there. When me and my mom were talking about it my dad asked her you're not really letting him go, are you? He was confused as if that was completely unacceptable. Now that was an awkward moment. Me, Josh, and Ryan noped right out of there to let them talk. My mom has known Josh's family for years so she knows his cousin and his cousin's GF are people she can trust to let us stay the night at their place and nothing bad will happen. My dad, on the other hand, does not know them and he thought it was crazy to let me go somewhere where the chaperones are two 21-year-olds. We don't really need chaperones but I can understand where he was coming from. It's really weird for both me and my mom that there's now someone else involved in making decisions about my life. My dad has eased our financial situation significantly. Just to be clear, I'm not saying he showed up and pulled us out of poverty or anything. My mom and I were doing fine. I didn't have to get a job when I turned 16. I did that because I wanted to make my own money and pay for my own car so my mom didn't have to. My dad however insisted on paying off the rest of my car and has since taken over my insurance payments. 
And it's not just the financial help, he's always there when I want to talk. Like I said above he's patient and understanding even when I'm acting like a dumbass. My mom says he's earned the right to have a say in things and that his opinion holds some weight. I agree. I can't just accept his money and love and not let him be an actual dad. I won't lie. I was actually really annoyed that it went from a done deal to me possibly not being able to go if my parents didn't agree on it, but I can tell it means something to my dad to be able to have a say in things. I don't know how to put it into words exactly but I can just tell he was, satisfied? Not because he's controlling, but he's mentioned a few times that he hates that he didn't get to be a part of my childhood. I think him having a say in what I'm allowed to do makes him feel more like a parent to me if that makes sense. I, maybe I'm just overthinking it. I tend to do that. Thankfully they agreed to still let me go on the condition that I had to answer any FaceTime calls and if I missed a call and didn't call back in 10 minutes I was grounded. Basically my dad was worried that I was going to be talked into drinking or smoking, I didn't. No one there did, by Josh's cousin and the cousin's GF. My mom only called me once but my dad FaceTimed me 6 times throughout the night. It was a bit much but he had his reasons for being concerned. There was also one moment where my mom was a bit upset about my growing relationship with my dad. I had asked my dad for advice about a girl that I wanted to ask out. I never told my mom about her but my dad did which made her a little sad that she didn't hear about it from me. I explained to her that there's just some things that I feel more comfortable talking to my dad about it. I wanted my dad's advice because he is a complete gentleman. I've seen him treat every woman he talks to with nothing but respect. I've never heard him say a single bad thing about his ex-wife. He treats my mom like he's been in love with her all his life. I guess I should also mention that my parents have been dating for about a month now. While I was initially afraid of all the drama that would bring it's thankfully been a non-issue. They handled it completely right in my opinion. I've known my dad has had a crush on my mom since his birthday party in February. I didn't ask but I believe my mom started developing feelings for him in May after his Mother's Day gift to her. They sat me and Ryan down last month and told us that they had feelings for each other and wanted to see where it would go but they promised they wouldn't pursue it if both of us weren't on board. This was only 5 days after I came clean about my online posts to Ryan. So they didn't know it but I was panicking thinking that it was horrible timing. They told us to take a few days to think about it and talk to each other about it. They didn't bring it up again until we were ready to talk about it. Ryan and I did discuss it. I told him the truth, that it didn't bother me. But I let him know that I would completely understand if he wasn't comfortable and if he didn't want them to date we could just tell them that we both were against it so he didn't have to feel the weight of being the one to say no. He wasn't sure how he felt at the time so he took a couple days to think about it. He told me our dad talked to him at home and said he can be honest if it was too much. My mom had basically the same talk with me at our house. After that Ryan told me that he likes my mom and he would rather our dad be with her than some random lady who tries too hard like his last girlfriend. Thankfully my parents don't make a show of their relationship. They pretty much just go on date nights and in front of us they keep it tame with simple hugs and kisses to greet and see each other off. It's definitely weird seeing my parents kiss but my dad treats my mom a lot better than any of her other boyfriends have and they both make each other happy. Ryan and I have begun to joke with them about their relationship so we're just starting to get out of the awkward phase and into it just being our new normal. Josh. Last but certainly not least, Josh has been busy this summer. He's working for his dad and playing in a soccer league. Usually at least one of our friends will be at his games to support him but there's been a couple times where no one in our friend group could go so once my mom and dad went with Josh's mom and the other time Ryan and our dad went which I thought was really cool of them. Ryan and Josh talked the first time that Ryan hung out with us in person. It wasn't a big moment at all. Ryan just apologized for what he said at our grandparents house. Josh said he knows Ryan wasn't aware of his grandpa's death and apologized to Ryan for trying to mangle, his, face. We all laughed at that and that was it. We've all been cool since then. Josh and my friends did have some issues when I would hang out with Ryan. Sometimes Ryan and I would hang out one on one while my friends did their own thing. They would say that we could all just hang out, but I think it's important that Ryan and I hang out by ourselves every once in a while. Some of my friends said I was choosing Ryan over them which isn't the case. I see my friends almost every day. Ryan lives an hour away so I see him a few times a week and I don't think it's unreasonable that every once in a while we hang out just the two of us. Josh and I got into an argument a couple months ago when Ryan first started coming here. He got pissed one day when he asked if we could hang out and I told him I couldn't because I was going to the city to have lunch with my dad and Ryan and then I had to work that night. He accused me of changing and replacing my mom and friends with my dad and Ryan. It came out of nowhere and it was really unlike Josh to get so annoyed over something so small. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to write what happened next on Reddit but that night Josh did something really dumb and reckless. After that he ended up calling my dad to pick him up because he was in the city and my dad was the closest adult he knew. My dad had to call Josh's parents to come get him. It was a whole thing. I found out the next day that he was having problems at home with his parents and he just found out his girlfriend, XGF now, was talking to another guy. He was just having a terrible day and said he felt like he had no one to talk to. When he found out I couldn't be there to talk to him he took his anger out on me. 
I felt horrible because he's always there for me when I need to vent especially when I had endless problems with Ryan. Josh is the kind of person that won't tell you something is wrong or that he needs help unless you're looking at him in the face and he can't hide his emotions. I should have known something was up when he asked me to bail on my lunch plans with my dad and brother. I would have if I had known what was going on and he knows that. Either way it all worked out and he did apologize for what he said to me. I don't hold it against him because I know he didn't mean it and he's not someone who acts like that at all normally. He and Ryan are also good and no other arguments have been brought up since then. Weirdly enough that situation caused my dad and Josh's dad to become friends and now they do business together too. It's strange how quickly and how much Ryan and my dad have become incorporated in my life now. I don't mind it, but it's crazy how much different my life is now compared to seven and a half months ago. Not only that, but how much just two people can switch up the dynamics of several relationships. Aside from that Josh is doing just fine. There's not really much to tell other than he's keeping himself busy this summer. As for me, I'm taking a creative writing course with my friend Bree. All of your comments about my writing made me curious about trying my hand at actual writing. The course has been really fun and I feel like I learned a lot. I've got two weeks left in it. I've tried writing fiction stuff but it's really hard. When I'm writing about stuff going on in my own life I just word vomit and don't shut up, but trying to create a story from scratch is difficult. I feel like I have a lot of good ideas but I sort of finish the story in my head and never get it written down on paper. I might not be cut out for writing. Also, I know a lot of people were wondering about my grandparents. Me, my dad, and Ryan went to visit them a couple weeks ago. It went significantly better than the last visit. Now that Ryan and I get along there were no fights or arguments. We all had a great time and my grandpa told me he was so happy to see me and Ryan getting along now. At one point my grandparents asked about college and I told them a few of the universities I was considering applying to. They told me to apply for any scholarships I want but that they would take care of the rest. I'm still in disbelief. I knew this family was well off but I didn't know they were put together a four-year college tuition fund and a year and a half kind of well off. I got emotional because I couldn't believe that level of kindness. These people owe me nothing. I haven't done anything for them. I offered to come clean their house and yard on weekends if I go to the university I'm considering that's 30 minutes away from their home. They just laughed and told me they would love if I came to visit when I can but I didn't have to pay them back. They said it was just making up for all the Christmas and birthday gifts they didn't get me. They are incredibly generous and I'm extremely grateful and lucky to have them as my grandparents. I guess that's all there is to tell for right now. I hope you guys have all been having a great summer. You can't even imagine how happy I am to be able to give nothing but good news in this post. All the turmoil from the beginning of the year seems to be becoming more and more of a distant memory every day. Thanks for reading. Take care of yourselves and the ones you love. Update 15, what I've learned. I started therapy about a month and a half ago. I didn't really know what I wanted out of it if I'm being honest. I knew that I was getting upset about a lot of things my dad said and did. I knew it was something that I needed to work on. I got mad at him over really stupid things. Like he would call Ryan about 50 nicknames, similar to the way Ryan used to talk to me except of course none of my dad's nicknames for Ryan were negative. They all had a story attached. I got to hear about how he calls Ryan Cricket because Ryan was such a loud hyper child. I know the story of why Ryan is sometimes called Rye Guy. I can recite the origin stories of the names Waterworks, Game Time, and Nate among several others. Some of the stories are admittedly funny and entertaining. I know the ABCs of Ryan and it makes me incredibly jealous. I'm not ignorant to that fact. I even admitted that to Ryan months ago. And just to be clear, I have not and will not take it out on Ryan. He and I are good. We've had a few disagreements and we're not best friends or anything but we are friends. I know it's not his fault that he has a good relationship with our dad and I would never try to make either of them feel guilty for that. It's a me problem. But it's so frustrating to have to hear all these stories about their relationship. Even though I'm positive that neither of them mean for it to be, to me it's like a constant hey, did you know we have years of wonderful memories together? Reminder. My attitude with my dad sort of came to a head when he tried to give me the talk because I've been spending more time alone with my girlfriend. I don't want to go into a bunch of details about my romantic life but put simply, he's a year late on having that talk with me. I had that talk with my mom when I got my first serious girlfriend at 16. I'm careful. I want to go to college, graduate, and live my own life first. I don't want to be a dad until I'm 30, if ever. My brain is so screwed up with my own issues and history regarding my own two dads that I'd probably be a terrible father and mess that hypothetical kid up more than I am tbh. Anyway, he just kept wanting to talk about it. He wanted to lecture me on the importance of proper condom usage and how he'd provide them for me, no questions asked. He wasn't being weird about it or anything. It was basically the same talk my mom gave me which might have been why it made me so annoyed, because I felt like I was retreading old ground. Then I said it. I said something mean and uncalled for. He was just trying to help me stay on course with my life plan. I should have just nodded and let him give his speech. But I had to open my big mouth and make a smartass comment. It worked. It got him to stop. 
but it also hurt his feelings to the point where he just left the condoms and walked out. I hated myself. I still hate myself for saying it. I apologized and he forgave me. But that was when I knew that I needed to get into therapy. I didn't want to keep treating him like that. I thought that I was being too sensitive, and in a way I probably am, but my therapist was able to help me realize why all this stuff bothered me so much. It's a big part of the reason that I'm so angry with my dad. I know the story. I know that he genuinely didn't know about me and I believe him 100% when he says he would have been involved in my life if he had known about me. I thought that my issue was that he wasn't what I expected a father to be. I said in my last post that I had an image in my head of what a father is and he didn't really fit it. It wasn't until my therapist asked me to put aside what I thought a father is supposed to be and tell her what kind of a father I wanted him to be that I had a realization. I like who my dad is. I don't want him to be different. I like that I don't have to worry about him pressuring me to be a certain kind of man. I like that I feel comfortable talking to him about anything, sometimes more comfortable than talking to my mom if I'm being honest. I don't want him to be the stereotypical normal father that I see in my friend's dads. What I realized is that my issue was never that he wasn't what I expected. It's that the relationship itself isn't what I expected. He and I don't have a normal father-son relationship. We don't even have a normal parent-child relationship. And we never will. We'll never have memories of each other from my childhood. When I think of my mom I think of all the times she held me when I cried, took care of me when I was sick, taught me how to talk to people, handle difficult situations, and how to treat others with respect. Things that matter. Things that made me who I am now. The fact is that I've already grown up. That's not to say that I have all the answers in life because I know I definitely don't. But what is there left for my dad to teach me? How to file taxes. How to, I can't even think of a second option. I'm sure there are things he can teach me about being an adult but the reality is that none of those will carry the same weight as my memories of my mom raising me. It's no fault of his own. I know that. But it is the way things are. And that just. Sucks. We have bonded. I do feel a connection with him. I felt it the first time he hugged me. And I do love him. I know that he loves me too. But I don't love him at the same level that I love my mom. And I'm sure even if he'd never admitted that he doesn't love me at the same level he loves Ryan. Most parents say they love all their kids equally and maybe that's true for those that raise their kids from birth. But how can a grown child you've known for 9 months compare to the kid you raised for 17 years? It's a hard pill to swallow. My therapist is suggesting my dad come in for one of my sessions. She says I need to be honest with him and tell him how I feel about our relationship. That should be completely terrifying. Not exactly looking forward to that. And I know people have commented before that I come off detached and emotionless in my posts. I want to assure you that I'm not a robot. I do have emotions. I just try to keep my online posts neutral. In real life I'm obnoxious in text messages with emojis to get my emotions and the tone of my message across accurately. Emoji use just isn't the norm here on Reddit so I just like to lay out the facts. In regards to actual update stuff, there's not really much to tell. I did meet Ryan's mom, officially. I had seen her from afar once before at an event but never spoke to her directly. That changed last week. Ryan had been coming here to my town a lot after school to hang out with us. I guess he neglected his studies and ended up doing bad on his first physics test. His mom was not happy. He didn't show up here for a few days and told his mom he'd already studied and learned the class material and would do better on his next test. Well his mom is a teacher so she gave him a makeup test. I'm not sure if she made the test herself or if she got a test from one of the teachers at her school or from his actual physics teacher. Either way, Ryan aced the test and proved to his mom that he wasn't lying about studying what he missed before. I never thought he was stupid but I definitely think he doesn't apply himself as well as he could. She still said she didn't like that he was coming here so much during the week. He was coming here usually two times, sometimes three, a week after school and on weekends when he wasn't at his mom's house. Sometimes he'd eat dinner here with our dad and I know he was doing his homework here but I guess he wasn't doing it right or maybe just rushing it. So my dad said that she wanted to meet me and my mom since he's spending so much time here. My dad had no problem with it but Ryan was really nervous which was making me nervous. My dad reassured me that Ryan's mom is a reasonable person and that Ryan was just nervous because he wanted his mom to like us so she would have no problem with him coming here. She came for dinner on Friday. She and I shook hands and after that she kinda stared at me then looked at my dad and said I really do look just like he used to. That was all she said to me at first. We ate dinner and it was pretty normal. They were just exchanging work stories mostly and Ryan and I were kind of having our own conversation. They brought us into the conversation a few times but never really brought up Ryan's grades or visits. After dinner she came and sat with me on the living room couch and asked me if Ryan was happy. The question caught me off guard because I was expecting her to grill me about what he does when he's here and what our friends are like. I told her the truth which is that I do think he's happy. When I met him he was very angry and closed off. I'm not sure how much of that was simply because of the fact that I popped up in his life and how much was already there before. But he does seem to be in a much better place than he was at the beginning of the year. 
She told me that she appreciates me inviting him to hang out with us but that she'd appreciate if I could ease up on the after school invites unless it's an important event. She wanted him to just come on the weekends and focus on school during the week. I wanted to tell her that I don't even invite or see him half the time that he's here. He hangs out more with Austin and Trevor when he comes. Sometimes I only see him for about 15 minutes when he stops by to say hi to me and my mom before heading home to go eat dinner with our dad. Sometimes I don't even know he's here unless he or one of our friends tell me or post it online. But I just kept my mouth shut because I doubt that information would change anything. They told Ryan and I to go upstairs to my room. So he and I hung out there while our parents talked. I told Ryan what his mom had said and he wasn't happy. He says it's not a big deal if he shows up as long as he keeps his grades up and doesn't flunk another test. He doesn't like the idea of only being able to come every other weekend but that's between him and his mom so I'd cow that'll pan out. After our parents talked Ryan left with his mom because it was her weekend with him. The last thing she said to me was that she's glad Ryan has a brother because he always wanted a sibling when he was younger, he definitely didn't show it when we first met, Skull, but she wasn't going through another pregnancy. Her and my mom started laughing and comparing how mine and Ryan's dad apparently gave them both difficult pregnancies. It was weird. Ryan and I both thought there was no way our moms would get along, especially with my mom and dad dating, but they genuinely seemed to like each other. Anyway they left and that was that. One thing I did notice is the way my dad's behavior changed. He's a very physically affectionate person in general. He always gives me and Ryan hugs. He'll put his arm around us when he's talking to one of us. He'll even give our friends a high five when he agrees with them or wants to congratulate them on something. With my mom he's obviously way more affectionate. He'll hug and kiss her constantly. They're worse than me and my girlfriend with that stuff. But when Ryan's mom was there he barely did anything with my mom. When I asked why after Ryan and his mom left he told me it was out of respect for his ex-wife. He said he and Ryan's mom are still friends and there's no need to put his new relationship on display. He also said that being overly affectionate like that may make people feel uncomfortable even if there's no history involved. I've never really thought of stuff like that. He had to be in a weird position to have his ex-wife and current girlfriend, both of them respective mothers to his children, having dinner together. But he still managed to be respectful to both and the dinner was a complete success. I wish I had that kind of talent to navigate an awkward situation like that. I know that was a lot of words for a not very interesting event, but there's really not much going on in my life right now. I don't have drama thankfully. My parents want me to focus on school since it's my last year so I moved down to being a seasonal employee at my job. Which means I have a lot more free time and I've even written 9 chapters of a story I started working on about a month ago. Life is pretty good for me right now. Spooky season, my favorite time of the year, is coming up so pretty excited for that too. A few people had asked about my uncle on my last post. I do have an update on that, but unfortunately it's not a good one. My dad hired one of his pie friends to locate his brother. My dad said he's wanted to look for him several times but always decided against it. Seeing me and Ryan has brought a lot of those memories back up for him and he decided it was time to try. My uncle lives a couple hours away from my home. My dad called the number a few weeks ago and got my uncle's voicemail. He left a message and his phone number but never heard back. He was crushed. I wish my uncle would have at least called him back but it's been 20 something years so I guess maybe he doesn't care about making amends anymore. Ike. I feel awful for my dad. He was really hoping to reconcile with his brother. I told him to write a letter but he said it's better not to push it right now and that my uncle has the contact info if he ever wants to reach out. Hope all is well for everyone. Sorry I don't have more exciting updates. Life has been pretty dull for me lately. I appreciate anyone who is still checking in though. Take care. Update 16, Uncle Scott. I screwed up and my dad paid the price for it. I meddled and stuck my nose in my family's business. I wanted my dad to have the Thanksgiving dinner he was dreaming about. Instead, I ruined the entire holiday two weeks early. I'm going to be referring to my uncle as Scott. That's not his real name. I know it probably seems silly to start using fake names now, but when I made my first post on my personal profile that named Ryan and Josh I had exactly 27 followers from the advice subreddit. I thought maybe 5 at most would comment. I never expected thousands of people to eventually follow and see these posts. Sorry if this is written poorly. I wrote it and quickly skimmed it as a proofread but I don't really want to dwell on the events any longer so I'm just posting it as is. A quick recap, over the summer my dad decided to try to reach out to his brother that he hasn't seen or heard from in over 20 years. When he saw how Ryan and I had worked past our differences and how we're becoming closer with each other it made him miss his own brother. He asked one of his pie colleagues to look into Uncle Scott's current whereabouts. It turns out he lives only two hours away from my town and one hour from the city where Ryan and our dad live. My dad initially called the number he was given. Scott didn't answer but dad left a voicemail. He never heard back. He tried to hide it but we could tell he was really upset. I asked him what the story was between them two but he didn't want to tell me at the time. During mid-October we were discussing plans for Thanksgiving. My parents were excited because it was going to be our first family holiday together. 
My dad invited mine and Ryan's grandparents. My maternal grandparents were coming. So were Josh and his parents, they don't have any family nearby and always spend it with my family. My dad told me and Ryan that he wished he could see his brother too. He decided to write a letter and mailed it to the address he had for my uncle. I don't know exactly what was said on it as it was private but my dad did say he invited my uncle to meet up with him to talk and maybe come to Thanksgiving dinner if things went well. Two weeks went by and he didn't get a response. He was understandably upset again even though he still tried to hide it. I hate that he does that. He tries to always be the strong, stoic man of the house. He's not afraid to show emotion but he always puts himself last. So the big question, why did my dad and uncle fall out 22 years ago? I'm sorry to say I can't give a completely clear answer due to my father's and family's privacy. A couple weeks ago Ryan and I asked him again what the story was. He didn't want to tell us but we kept bugging him so finally he told us what happened between the two of them. Again, I can't get completely specific so I apologize. But basically my dad inherited a large sum of money and a family heirloom from my great grandpa when he died. Scott received money too but apparently nowhere near as much as my dad. And the inherited item is a family heirloom that for whatever reason is important in our family. These were passed down to my dad because he's the firstborn grandson and I guess my great grandpa had some antiquated idea about the item's line of succession. Apparently this heirloom was an extremely coveted object in the family. My dad was 19 when he inherited it. Scott was 16 at the time. He was jealous not so much about the money difference, but the heirloom. He apparently demanded he had just as much of a birthright to it. The only problem is that it's not something that can be split and it was already given to my father. Dad said that he just told his brother to get over it because it was done and over with. That probably sounds super confusing and I might have explained it horribly but in a nutshell, it was an inheritance fight. Dad got something Scott wanted. Scott was angry over it. Dad admits he wasn't very sympathetic at the time and told our uncle to just accept it as there was nothing to be done about it. He said before that they were pretty close and always got along. Their relationship was tense and dwindling for two years until my uncle turned 18 and walked away from the entire family. He never got past it. TBH when me and Ryan heard that explanation we thought, that's it? That was the big incident that's caused them to be no contact for decades, a dispute over some stupid family inheritance? It honestly sounded so dumb and I think my dad realizes that now. He admitted that he didn't want to tell us what happened not because it's some horrifying family secret, but because he was embarrassed at how childish the whole thing was in retrospect. He said by the time he was in his mid-twenties it didn't even matter anymore and he wanted to reach out to his brother but he was ashamed at how he acted back then. Then he found out Ryan's mom was pregnant and his priorities shifted to his new family and he let it go for so long even though he's missed him. Seeing me and Ryan become not just brothers but actual friends made him realize he didn't want to go the rest of his life without burying the hatchet with his own brother, but he said that his brother clearly wanted nothing to do with him so he had to make peace with that. That's where I fucked up. I should have left it alone, but I couldn't accept that they would just go their entire lives without each other. I thought they could work past it if they just sat down and talked the way that Ryan and I had done back in April. I now know that it was silly for me to equate the situations but I had a fantasy in my head of convincing my uncle to come to Thanksgiving dinner. Our dad does so much for all of us and he never does anything for himself. I wanted him to have the Thanksgiving he really wanted, with his brother. I snuck into my dad's home office and found the file he had with Scott's information. I lucked out that he had the file in his desk drawer and not in the locked safe where he keeps client information slash documents. Scott works as a dentist so I called the number for his work pretending like I was trying to set up an appointment. I asked the lady on the phone what days he wasn't available and she told me he's off Friday through Sunday. That worked out because we had the day off of school on Friday for Veterans Day. So I made a plan to drive to his house hoping to catch him and talk. Originally Josh was gonna come with me but his dad told him last minute that he had to stay home to help with something, so I was gonna just go alone. I asked Ryan to cover for me if our dad or my mom asked where I was. He told me that my plan was insane and not to do it. I should have listened but I told him I was going anyway so he decided to come with me because he didn't want me to be alone in case our uncle was crazy or something. I won't lie, I was glad he came with because I was a little nervous even though I was dead set on going. So we drove to Scott City and went to his home. We knocked on the door and it was actually him that answered. I'd only seen a couple of old pictures of him when he was young but I just knew it was him because he looks a lot like our dad and grandpa. The genes on my dad's side are really strong. When he confirmed his name we told him we were his nephews and he slammed the door in our faces. But we didn't go all that way just to go back home without saying what we had to say. We kept knocking and ringing the doorbell but he wouldn't answer. So Ryan did what he does best and got under Scott's skin until he got a reaction. He yelled out that we weren't going anywhere so he should probably let us in unless he wants to explain to all his neighbors why he's got two teenage boys loudly begging to be let into his house. Scott opened the door again and told us to leave or he was gonna call the cops. I told him fine, call them. But at least hear what we have to say until they get here. Which is stupid, I know, but I was desperate. He finally let us in, I think mostly just to get us to shut up and stop making a scene on his front porch. 
He was home alone but he had a lot of pictures hanging on the walls of him with a woman and young girl so it seems like he's married with a daughter. We sat down in his living room and he asked us what he wanted. We asked if he'd gotten our dad's voicemail and letter. He said he did and that he turned off the voicemail when he realized who it was and threw away the letter without reading it. We asked him why he wouldn't consider giving our dad a chance and he said he moved on a long time ago. Ryan asked him that if he's over the fight why won't he just let it go and talk to our dad. Scott replied that he's not looking to dredge up the past. We did confirm with him that our dad was telling the truth about the inheritance dispute. Although Scott added that our dad wasn't a good older brother after that fight, weirdly enough, our dad has said the exact same thing to us before. I asked if there was something else that either of them wasn't telling us and he said that there's nothing, he just never got along with our dad after the reading of the will. Ryan told him that our dad really misses him and Scott said that he misses someone who doesn't exist anymore. I tried telling him that it all seems silly and asked if it was really worth still holding on to a grudge 22 years later? I would understand if our dad stole his girlfriend or badly beat him up or something unforgivable. And yes, I'm sure everyone knows that it sucks to be told to get over something when you're upset. But in the moment at Scott's house I was just thinking, was that really worth throwing away an entire family? It doesn't seem like our dad or Scott were lying but it makes no sense to me that they gave up their whole relationship with each other over this stupid item that neither of them seemed to even care about anymore. I told Scott that we don't know who our dad was then, but we know who he is now. I said that our dad talks about him and his regret and their falling out all the time. Our uncle wouldn't budge though. He insisted it was in the past. Ryan wouldn't let it go and was arguing with him which just made Scott mad. Ryan told him, without being specific, that he and I had a lot of problems with each other earlier this year but we were able to work past it and forgive each other because that's what family is supposed to do. Eventually Scott told Ryan that we don't understand the kind of betrayal he felt from our dad because we didn't grow up together. Me and Ryan noticed it immediately. He slipped up. I asked him how he knew that, but he didn't even realize what he had said. So I asked him how could he possibly know that we didn't grow up together if he hasn't spoken to anyone in the family in two decades. He kind of stumbled on his words for a second before he said because we're obviously half-brothers. Only it's not obvious. Ryan and I don't look like twins but I think the vast majority of people would be able to tell we're brothers right away. Also, we're both complete white boys so it's not like there's a skin tone difference that would give away our half-relation either. And even if it was somehow obvious that we're half-brothers I don't think that automatically tells people that you didn't grow up together. We asked again how he knows about us being half-brothers but he got mad and started shouting at us to get out of his house and never come back. Ryan started yelling that we weren't leaving but Scott was pissed off and yelling at us to just go home. I grabbed Ryan and told him let's just go. It was kind of scary to be honest. I never got the sense that he was gonna hit us or anything but the way he shifted so quickly from someone who was slightly annoyed but talking to us calmly to just straight up angry and yelling at us to get out was a shock. When we got back into my car I realized my dad had called me six times. Ryan had even more missed calls and showed me a text message from our dad that said he knew where we were and to get home now in all caps. I asked Ryan if he'd left his location sharing on and he confirmed that he had. I asked why and he said just in case Scott was a psycho and locked us in his basement or something. At least our parents would know where to look. He texted our dad that we were heading back home but neither of us answered his or my mom's calls. We knew we were in trouble. On the ride back we tried to figure out how our uncle knew about the past year. We thought maybe he'd seen my reddit posts. But that didn't make sense because I never wrote my dad's name and theoretically he shouldn't know Ryan's name or even of his existence. The only thing I said in my posts relating to my uncle was that he and our dad hadn't talked in 20 plus years and that's not exactly a smoking gun for identification. When we got to our dad's house he was mad. He was yelling at us asking what we were thinking going over there and why we would be so reckless. That was the first time he's ever yelled at me and as much as I hate to admit it, it brought back all my fears that he was gonna abandon me and decide he didn't want me as a son. I tried to tell him not to blame Ryan because it was my fault and he just didn't want me to go alone. I told him I was the one who took Scott's info from his desk and insisted on visiting him but it didn't matter to our dad. He told us we both exhibited poor judgment and we should have known better than to run off and go visit a complete stranger an hour away from home. Ryan told him that he's not a stranger, he's your brother. Our dad shouted exactly that our uncle is his brother and a stranger to the two of us. He said he doesn't know what his brother has been up to for the last 20 years and whether or not it was safe for us to be around him, let alone secluded with him at his house. I said that we just wanted to make him feel better but apparently that was the wrong thing to say because he asked us how much better do we think he's gonna feel if something had happened to the two of us because we were trying to do something for him. All we could say was sorry at that point. Once he was done yelling Ryan told him that we had to tell him something. Our dad asked what happened but then Ryan backed out and told me to tell him. So I told him everything that happened from when we got there and ending with the fact that Scott somehow knew we were half brothers and didn't grow up together. I could see the gears turning in our dad's head but he told me and Ryan to go to our rooms and that we were grounded for what we did. We tried protesting but he put his foot down and told us not to argue with him. It's a strange feeling, being grounded by my dad for the first time a week before my 18th birthday. I messed up even further by pleading to my mom. 
I told her I don't even live here and I, being grounded by my dad just seemed weird, I obviously didn't say that second part out loud. That was clearly a mistake. My mom quickly listed off my offenses. She said that I broke into my father's office, stole private information from his desk, lied to her about where I was going to be that day, drove hours away from home to a completely different city without their permission, and harassed a man into letting us into his home. She said I was 100% grounded and I better hope my dad gives me a lighter punishment than the one she was considering. I almost never get in trouble so I was hoping that my mom would be out of practice, but she really doesn't miss a beat when it comes to discipline. Ryan and I went to our rooms. As I said before I thought that I had just heard my dad yelling. Turns out I was wrong. When he was talking to us he was just raising his voice. He got on the phone and he started actually yelling. I could hear him all the way from my room. Keep in mind, my dad does not have a small house and my room is on the opposite side of the house from his bedroom. That's how loud he was yelling. I couldn't make out all the words but I could hear how angry he was. Long story short, he called my grandparents and it turns out they've been in contact with Uncle Scott for years. My mom explained it to me when we got home but apparently Scott wasn't on speaking terms with anyone when he turned 18. After a couple years he reconciled with my grandparents under the condition that they had a separate relationship not involving my dad at all. This has been going on for 20 years. My dad had no idea. Ryan said it sort of makes sense because apparently sometimes they had weird holiday hours with our grandparents. Like one year our grandparents went to their house for Thanksgiving and left before 4 p.m. Another year they insisted Ryan's family go to visit them on Christmas Eve and not stay for Christmas Day. Our grandparents' excuse for the odd time slash days was that they were visiting their oldest friends who have no family in a different city on those holidays. It's now clear that they were likely visiting Scott and his family. My dad yelled at his parents that he never wanted to speak to them again and he uninvited them from Thanksgiving. It's all a mess. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. As if all it would take to recover from two decades of estrangement was one conversation from someone he's never even met. It was stupid. I know that now. My mom was understanding that I was trying to do something nice but she said I went about it completely the wrong way by sneaking around. It didn't click for me until she told me to imagine if she and I were in a fight and some family member I've never met came to me and tried to tell me how I'm supposed to feel about it. And I now know that what we did on the front porch was harassment. I wish I could apologize to Scott for it. I just had an idea in my head of what was supposed to happen and had tunnel vision on making it a reality. I let my emotions control my actions instead of my brain. That night Ryan went to his mom's for the weekend. My dad came over to our house the next day. I think he just wanted to be with my mom. He's not even hiding how upset he is. I don't think he can this time. He said none of it is my fault and that he's not mad at me and the worst part is that I actually believe he's telling the truth about not being mad. When he came over yesterday one of the first things he said to me was not to worry about my college fund because he would be paying for me. My grandparents had previously offered to pay for my tuition over the summer. I still can't believe it. I ruined his relationship with his parents and all he had to say to me was that he'd take care of my tuition in their place. I don't give a shit about the college money. I care about him. So now Thanksgiving is ruined because I couldn't just mind my own damn business and stay out of it. I'm sorry if that's disappointing. I know a lot of people praised me for being mature and how I handled things with Ryan at the beginning of the year. I'm sorry that I can't live up to that standard. I had good intentions, but that doesn't make what I did okay. I'm not going to be reaching out to Scott, I promised my parents I would leave him alone from now on or my grandparents. I've caused enough damage already. All I can do is keep apologizing to my dad and pray that this month goes by quickly. I don't even want to celebrate Thanksgiving or my birthday anymore. I'm not looking for sympathy and I'm not depressed so please don't send me any Reddit cares messages. I'm disappointed in myself right now but I'll recover. I always do. Eventually. Hope you all had a great Halloween and have been well. Update 17, 18. My birthday was yesterday. I'm legally an adult. I can vote, join the military, get a tattoo, rent an apartment, and a multitude of other things that I couldn't do two days ago. A whole world of possibilities has just opened up to me. And yet, even with the knowledge of all the new opportunities available to me I don't feel any different. My dad was quiet and somber after the revelation that his parents have been in regular contact with his brother for the past 20 years. I thought he'd be hurt by that forever. I guess it's possible he always will in one way or another. However, two days before my birthday, and the day before my grounding ended, he stopped by the house and pulled me into a big hug before asking if I was excited for my birthday party. It was like nothing had happened. He was back to his regular self in just a few days. I didn't understand it. I still don't. My dad's been looking forward to my birthday. A lot more than I have actually, even before the shit show that took place last weekend. My mom had been telling me he was excited to get to throw me a birthday party for the first time. He had the entire thing planned out but he wouldn't tell me about it. He only asked what kind of cake I wanted. He did a fantastic job. I've been to several parties in the building it was at, but I've never seen it decorated the way that it was for my 18th. He really went above and beyond. 
The theme he chose was happy birthdays and there was even a giant banner that said happy birthdays Caleb on one of the walls. The night was filled with singing, dancing, and laughing. There was a ton of food. Luckily a lot of people actually showed up, including people from school I don't even really talk to, otherwise all that food would have gone to waste. It was the best birthday party I've ever had. Only I couldn't fully enjoy it. There were moments where I let myself be happy and enjoy myself. But I had this constant feeling of guilt. My dad put together an extravagant birthday party for me even after I ruined his Thanksgiving plans. I know the general consensus is that it wasn't my fault and that my grandparents made their decision themselves. I understand that, but I still couldn't help but feel guilty about the whole thing. It didn't help that he bought me 18 gifts. One for this year, and 17 for all the other birthdays that he missed. He really put a lot of thought into the gifts. Obviously my mom had to help him pick things out, but the amount of effort blew my mind. He got gifts that reflected either milestones or my interests at every age. For the first gift he got me a large plastic bottle with milk chocolate candies in it. For the sixth gift he got me a Pokemon shirt with the Gen 5 starters because when I was 6 I was obsessed with Pokemon. For the 12th gift he bought me a Minecraft Lego set. The 16th was a roadside kit and car wash gift card. Finally, the 18th gift was a new laptop with pre-installed software which he says is for writing. My mom told me later that the entire party with the theme and the 18 gifts was his idea. Her role in the gifts was simply to tell him what my interests were at every age and show him pictures slash videos of my past birthday parties and gifts. I don't know how anyone could ever top that entire gesture. It was just so well planned and thought out. After the party my core group of friends and my girlfriend came over to our house. We just hung out for a bit talking about the party and looking at our classmates posts about it before I had to take my girlfriend home because of her curfew. The guys were all staying over for a movie game night. My mom and Josh knew something was up with me most of the night. Josh knew specifically because I had told him how I'd been feeling. My mom is just psychic and always knows when I'm not myself. But when I dropped my girlfriend off she asked if everything was okay. She knows what went down last weekend but I hadn't seen her in person almost all week since I was grounded. She thought that I was upset at her for something she might have done at the party which just made me feel like crap. I haven't said much about my girlfriend in the past because despite my tendency to overshare on my family drama, I do like to keep some things like my dating life private. But when it came to my birthday party she was incredible all night. She helped set up the table decorations and was immensely patient and understanding when I was trying to make sure that I talked to everyone who came to the party all night. She led the happy birthday song with my mom. My relationship with my ex was a lot, different than with my current girlfriend and it's a breath of fresh air. Honestly she's just all around amazing and I'm incredibly lucky to have her. So the fact that she thought I was upset with her made me realize that I need to get my head out of my ass and stop being so mopey because it's starting to affect the people I care about. I apologized and assured her that she helped make my birthday party the best one ever, which is true. When I got back home I decided that I would sit on the porch bench swing for a few minutes and let go of the guilt at least temporarily so I could enjoy the rest of my birthday with my friends. As I was sitting there my dad came outside. He probably saw me because you can see the bench swing from inside the house if the curtains are open. He asked what I was doing and I told him that I just needed a minute before I went back inside to the craziness that happens anytime my friends and I get together. He sat down with me asked me how it felt to be 18. I told him that I thought I'd feel different. Smarter, older. I thought that just knowing that I was 18 now would make me feel like an adult. But the truth is it feels a lot like 17. My dad kind of chuckled and explained to me that there's no moment at 18 where your brain switches to adult mode. He says it happens slowly over time and that I likely won't even notice when it does. That I'll just think of or see something one day and realize the way I feel about it has changed because I'm older and have more life experience. And even then I won't have all the answers. I'll still mess up and make mistakes. Then he said the truth is that we're all just people trying to figure life out as we go along. I told him that he makes adulthood sound depressing. He laughed and said it really sucks some days but that I have him and my mom to help me whenever I need them. I apologized for ruining Thanksgiving. He just put his arm around me in a side hug and said I didn't ruin anything. He had said that before, the day after everything happened, but I think it was all so fresh for him that his mind was somewhere else when he said it. Which is completely fair. I told him that if I would have just minded my own business his parents would still be coming for Thanksgiving and he would still have hope that his brother might want to reconcile one day. He assured me that I'm not responsible for other people's actions and that all that stuff happened years before I was born. I did ask him if he meant what he said about never talking to grandma and grandpa again. He said that he meant it at the time but that they're still his parents and he still loves them. He doesn't want to lose any more family members if he can help it. Then he told me that the more he thinks about it the more he realizes that if he was in their position he would have done the same thing. That if me or Ryan told him he could have a separate relationship with us or none at all he would choose separate every time. He said that he needs time away from his parents right now because regardless of their excuses about Scott insisting they couldn't tell my dad anything all these years that they could have at the very least told him that Scott was doing alright. 
I guess my dad has talked to them about how he missed Scott several times over the years and they said nothing every time. That's what he's most heard about. He also mentioned that it was disrespectful of them to tell Scott everything that was happening in his life, especially regarding me and what happened at the end of last year. At that point my mom came out and reminded me that my friends were all waiting for me inside. She sat down with us and asked if I felt any better. I did. Even though nothing was really resolved, just talking it out with my dad made me feel better. You would think by now I would know that just talking things through would be the answer instead of overthinking and wondering what if? I guess I'm still learning that lesson even after all this time. Ever since I was little my mom has done this thing where she rubs my back in a circular motion. Whenever I was upset she would always do that. I don't think it does much physically but it always makes me feel better. She asked if I was too old for a back rub now. I told her no. Honestly I don't think I'll ever outgrow that. She rubbed my back and we just talked about random stuff that's going on in our area for a few minutes. I realize how lucky I am to have parents that love me and want me to always be okay, especially when their own problems are always much worse than mine. I promise I'll never take them for granted. I don't know where I would be without their guidance and support. After that we all went inside and I ended up playing this horror movie video game with my friends. It was really fun. We only got halfway through it before we started to knock out one by one. We're gonna finish it sometime next week. I don't necessarily feel guilt anymore, but I do still feel horrible for my dad. I can't imagine what he's going through mentally. And I still partly believe that I don't know the full story with him and his brother. I likely never will, but I'm keeping my promise to stay out of it. All I can really do for him is what a few people suggested on my last post. I'll hug him more, remind him that I love him and I'm grateful for him. I hope that's enough for now. If not, I'll keep doing it until it is. Regarding my grandparents I haven't spoken to them but I did get a birthday card with $500 from them. There was a short note saying that they had planned to give it to me on Thanksgiving but since they were no longer coming they just sent it through the mail. I'm not sure if I'll keep the money. It feels kinda scummy to keep it when I'm upset with them. My dad says he has no problem with me and Ryan maintaining a relationship with them because they're still our grandparents and the issue has nothing to do with us. But I feel like I need to stand by him and not accept the money. I don't want to return it and potentially cause more issues so I'll probably just donate it to the local children's hospital. I know they accept donations this time of year specifically to buy Christmas presents for the children. I'm still a bit nervous about Thanksgiving. I think it might still be a bit awkward with the elephant in the room being my missing grandparents. However, we've gotten through so much this past year. I know we can handle a couple of empty spots at our Thanksgiving dinner table. I don't think I'll update before the day so I hope all my fellow Americans have a great Thanksgiving. Update 18, one year ago today. A man walked into my work. I thought he was strange and honestly a bit of a weirdo by the way he presented himself. It was just nerves. I had no clue who he was, but he knew that he was my father. It wasn't until several months later that I learned that after he left my work he drove back home an hour away and had dinner with his son, my half-brother Ryan. After Ryan left to his mother's house for the weekend, my father returned to my town and told my mother that he couldn't stay away and wait for the right time as he'd agreed with her earlier that day. I got off work at 9 p.m. and went home to find them in the middle of an argument that ended in my father admitting who he was to me, and my mother confirming that he was telling the truth. That was the catalyst for what has to be the longest, strangest year of my life. If someone had asked me where do you see yourself in a year? On any day before December 18th of last year I never could have guessed correctly. I have two parents again. My mom is dating someone who makes her truly happy. I have a blood brother. Despite a very rough start he and I are pretty good friends now. Of course, not everything in life goes smoothly. I gained a new set of grandparents. They've been nothing but warm and welcoming to me from the moment they learned about me. However, they also lied to my dad for two decades about being in contact with his estranged brother. As a result my dad and Ryan won't be visiting them for Christmas for the first time ever, as far as I know. My grandma is still holding out hope that my dad will change his mind last minute. I'm fairly certain that he won't. While I did meet my dad a year ago today, that night didn't end well. Instead of sitting down and hearing what my mom had to say, I panicked. I left to stay the night at my best friend's house and after he fell asleep I ended up panic posting on Reddit. I didn't get much of a response at the time. To be fair, it was around 11 o'clock at night where I am. The few responses I did get were helpful. It was a relief to get to vent and receive advice from people with an unbiased perspective. I got lucky back then. What could have been an awful curveball in my life ended up being one of the best things to ever happen to me. Though it did take some time to get to the good part. My dad and I have had ups and downs in forming a relationship with each other over the past year. It hasn't been easy. There's been a steep learning curve. I've had to learn that he's not an infallible storybook hero. He's just a man who tries his best but still messes up sometimes. He's had to learn that I'm not Ryan and parenting is not one size fits all. Ryan and I are very different people and our dad has had to adjust the way he talks to and treats me over time. Therapy helps. It's embarrassing to say now but a year ago I thought that therapy was only for people who were either depressed or mentally ill. It's not. 
I like the therapist I talked to. She helped me figure out some things about myself and what I want in my life and relationships. My dad and I had a couple sessions together that were difficult but ultimately necessary, I think. Those sessions really helped us see eye to eye on some things and say things we'd both been holding back for fear of hurting one another. It's still a work in progress. I think it'll take a lot more time, maybe even years, for us to get to a place where we're fully comfortable and secure with each other. That's okay with me. In the beginning I was worried that I would mess things up. I thought that I had to be a certain kind of person for him to love and accept me. If I made a mistake he would leave. That's not the case. He, like my mom, needs no other reason to love me than the simple fact that I'm his child. Unconditional love is incredible. I don't want to bore you all with another 4,000 word post so I'm keeping this one short. I just wanted to take a few minutes to reflect on the past year. I didn't think my dad would remember what today was but of course, being the sentimental person that he is, he remembered. He took me out to lunch at my favorite restaurant in the city. It was a relatively normal lunch but he did mention that it's been a year since we first met and we talked about it for a few minutes. He said he's incredibly grateful that we managed to beat some ridiculous odds to find each other, and that he can't imagine his life without me in it now. We also took a picture together to add to the photo album I gifted him for Christmas last year. It's been getting filled with photos and mementos from the past year. It really means a lot to me that he has kept it and updated it throughout the year like I hoped he would. Other than that we just made plans to watch It's a Wonderful Life again this year on Christmas which will be at his house this year. That's all I really have to say. Thanks again if you're still here checking in and reading updates, even though they're mostly boring and uneventful since Ryan and I started over last spring. I hope those of you who celebrated have a fantastic Christmas and I'm wishing everyone a happy new year. And not that anyone asked but I absolutely gave Ryan shit about last New Year's Eve. No way I was passing up that opportunity. I told my dad I'm not going to his house for New Year's Eve this year in case Ryan throws a fit and storms off to his room again. Ryan responded by punching me in the arm and telling me to shut up. Update 19, the past 6 months. I can't believe it's been nearly half a year since I last updated. Time really does fly. I hope you've all been well. TBH, I'm surprised that people still continue to follow and message me asking for updates here. A lot has happened, some bad but mostly good, since my last post so if anyone is still interested here's what my life has been like since the last time I posted. Also I apologize if this comes off unpolished. I've been meaning to update for about a month but I kept forgetting and I was busy with finishing school at the time. I just wrote this up now and didn't really proofread it but I want to post it before I forget again. With that disclaimer out of the way, unfortunately I have to start with the bad. So originally I thought that I was going to update after Christmas to let everyone know how my holiday went. It was supposed to be my first Christmas with both my dad and Ryan. However, two days after my last post my maternal grandfather died unexpectedly. And just to be completely clear that's my mom's dad, not my grandpa that I've written about here in the past. He wasn't sick. He wasn't even having any symptoms of anything. He was actually on his way to a doctor's appointment when he had a sudden heart attack in the car before they even pulled away from the sidewalk. 911 was called and a group of firemen showed up and took turns doing chest compressions for 15 minutes before they announced he was dead. I'm not sure if he was even still alive after the heart attack but my grandma and cousin who was driving them to the doctor said the firefighters tried their hardest to keep him alive. But I guess it was just his time. I was with my friends when my mom called me and told me I had to come home because she needed to tell me something. I knew something was wrong because she was trying not to cry but she wouldn't tell me over the phone. I was terrified that something had happened to my dad. It was to the point where I was basically hyperventilating cause I was so scared that it was happening again. In retrospect I should have just asked her if my dad was okay but I wasn't really thinking straight at the time. So Josh ended up driving me back home and my mom sat me down and told me what happened. And it didn't make sense to me at the time because like I said my grandpa wasn't sick. When Josh's grandpa died he and everyone else knew that it was coming. His health declined and he ended up being bedridden. He got to get everything in order and see all of his children and grandchildren. Even I got to see him and talk to him one last time before he died. I always assumed it would be like that for my own grandparents. I mean I know that anyone can die at any time, any age. Believe me, I know that better than most people. But I didn't expect it to be like that, to just be told that he was already gone. I didn't get to say goodbye or tell him how much he meant to me. He was the closest thing that I had to a dad between my adoptive dad dying and meeting my bio dad. I never saw him as a father figure because he was always my grandpa, not my dad. But when I think about it now he really did fill that role in my life for a long time. I wanted to post here to sort of vent when it happened. It wouldn't have changed anything but I know there are a lot of compassionate people here and your kind words have helped me a lot in the past. However, this is still Reddit so there are also a lot of assholes and trolls here as well. While they rarely ever comment publicly on my posts, I usually get at least a couple private messages from that category of people every time I post. They assume everything I've written is fake and will message me stuff like you should have, XYZ, happen next or can't wait until Ryan shows up in the comments and we get his side of the story. Normally I just roll my eyes and ignore it. 
but when the grief was fresh I was not in a good mental state at all and even just one person suggesting I faked my grandpa's death for a reddit post would have crushed me. That's how fragile I was at the time. So instead I just dealt with it with the support of my family and friends. That ended up being a lot more unloading than I planned on. I'm okay now. I've accepted that he's gone. But when it first happened it affected me in a way that I would have never expected. My mom and I ended up going to my grandparents city for Christmas Eve and Christmas. All my aunts, uncles, and cousins came and we tried to have a small celebration. My grandpa wasn't the kind of person who would want us to sit there being sad and gloomy. My grandma understood that better than anyone even though no one would have blamed her if she had decided to stay in her room all day. My dad wanted to come but he couldn't just take Ryan with him as Ryan was still a minor at the time and his mom understandably wanted her son at her own family's Christmas celebration. So they stayed behind and we didn't even end up celebrating Christmas until my mom and I got back. January was honestly a blur. I was dealing with the grief being fresh. I also had college applications due. Honestly, I don't know how the hell I managed to get through that month. Other than my grandpa's funeral I remember almost nothing from back then. Even though I felt like a shell of a person while I did my applications, I somehow managed to get accepted to most of the schools that I applied to. Most importantly I got accepted to both of my top two choices. Ever since I was a freshman and learned what college actually is I've dreamed of moving somewhere far away. I've grown up in a very small town where you're never more than two degrees away from anyone else in town. I knew when I graduated that I wanted to move to a beach city. I wanted to be somewhere near the ocean. And when I got accepted to my top two choices I thought that my decision was going to be between those two. I went back and forth weighing the pros and cons, mostly just related to distance from my parents, my girlfriend, and my best friend. But the more I went back and forth between the two I kept asking myself what if I just stayed? I did apply and get accepted to the university in my dad's city but that was always a last resort for me. It's a good school but it always felt like the safe option. To speed things up, after contemplating for a couple weeks I still hadn't made a choice and it was already the end of April. No matter how many times I would sway to one school or the other I kept going back to the local university. And so in the end I decided that I wasn't ready to say goodbye to my family just yet. I still feel like I just met my dad and my brother. I don't want to just pack up and leave and then only see them on holidays. My parents were both shocked and elated that I decided to go to the local university. Especially my mom. She's been mentally preparing herself for me to leave the last two years. While I'm staying close to home I told my parents that I'm still going to live in the dorms on campus. I still want a normal college experience even if my dad's house will only be a 10 minute drive away. My mom also wasted no time in making me promise I would have dinner with them at my dad's house at least once a week. Jokes on her, I don't mind showing up for a home cooked meal once a week. Since Josh is going to the same university we put in a roommate request but we won't know if it got approved until we get our room assignments. Ryan is also going to the same university, it was always his first choice, but he's staying at our dad's house. He said he prefers having his own room and bathroom and I can't even blame him. So I guess the three of us are all sticking around a bit longer. The downside of choosing to stay is that my now ex-girlfriend was not at all happy. She was fine with either of my top two choices because both were a lot closer to the school she's going to. As in we would be able to see each other every week and had plans to alternate who would drive to the other or we could meet halfway if we both had busy schedules. However her school is hours away from our town and the city I'm going to college in. She accused me of choosing my family over her and said she wasn't going to do a long distance relationship. I was upset because I thought we could make it work even if it wasn't ideal but she put an expiration date on our relationship right then and there. We still went to prom together and celebrated graduating but she officially broke things off three days after graduation. It's weird because she's the one who broke up with me, told me not to reach out to her, but yet she still calls and texts me. She tells me that she misses me and she got pissed because she saw a picture of me when I went to a party and talked to a girl I was sitting next to. Wasn't even flirting with the girl. My ex knows I don't even have Riz. We were literally just talking for maybe 15 minutes max because we happened to be sitting right next to each other. But apparently having a conversation with a girl in public means I never gave a fuck about my ex and moved on in a heartbeat. I, bro, girls are crazy. Moving on to the thing everyone reading is most likely interested in, my uncle and paternal grandparents. Surprisingly there is a big update there though it's not very exciting. I thought that my dad was just done with his parents. A lot of people told me that he would likely forgive them once time had passed. Well those people were right. My dad's birthday was in February. He got a phone call from his brother Scott that morning. Scott had called my dad to wish him a happy birthday, which none of us ever expected. My dad didn't care what the reason was. He was just over the moon to get a call from his brother. I personally think my grandparents had something to do with it as a way to get my dad's forgiveness because he wasn't talking to them at all for a few months. But I might have just become a bit cynical since that whole fiasco back in November. So he and Scott ended up meeting up to go golfing one day. I don't know what was said as I wasn't there but my dad did come back in a great mood that day. Ryan and I had asked him to apologize on our behalf for crossing the line and trying to force a reconciliation between them. 
My dad said Scott wasn't mad about it and he just told our dad that his boys are stubborn as hell just like they used to be. So I did get confirmation that he didn't hate us which was a huge relief. They hung out a couple more times after that, but it was just the two of them. My dad invited him to our Easter barbecue but Scott already had plans to visit his wife's family so they didn't come. However my dad did invite my grandparents to Easter as well. They were very happy to see us. It was overall a pretty good day. My dad was still a bit mad at them. It seemed like he was getting annoyed at them easily. They weren't arguing but he was kind of keeping his distance. You know how you can tell when someone is annoyed but they're doing their best to remain cordial? That was him that day. I think he was trying to move past their lie but it was the first time he'd seen them in person since it happened so maybe it was difficult for him. He's been a lot nicer with them since then but it's not the same as it was when I first met them. I'd give they'll ever get back to where they were before. The weekend after Easter my dad invited Scott and his wife to Ryan's 18th birthday party. They did end up showing up for that and they're both incredibly nice people. They actually brought a gift not just for Ryan but for me too since they missed my 18th birthday back in November. They said it was okay for us to call them Uncle Scott and Aunt Tracy. They didn't bring their daughter because it was mostly teenagers at the party but they said we'll meet her later. I did take an opportunity to apologize to my uncle when he and I were alone. It really seemed like he didn't care anymore though. He just laughed it off and said he hopes that someday his daughter loves him as much as Ryan and I love our dad. His mannerisms remind me a lot of my dad and grandpa. You wouldn't think it because they hadn't spoken in so long but there are certain things he and my dad do which makes it clear that they're brothers, aside from the obvious physical resemblance. They have the exact same laugh which is really weird to hear in person. I think that's about it. I can't think of anything else worth mentioning at the moment. We aren't perfect and we still have arguments and disagreements. Despite that, we're all close and comfortable enough with each other now that we can work things out even if we need time to cool off. I can mess up without feeling like my dad's gonna drop me out of his life. Ryan and I can talk without feeling like we have to filter ourselves to prevent an argument. And trust me he can easily get on my nerves and I'm sure he'd say the same about me. That being said, I'm always the first person he messages when he's even just slightly annoyed with our dad so he'll never stay mad at me long. I don't know that there will be any reason to continue updating regularly. I may meet my cousin soon but I doubt that would be worth updating about as she's a young kid and I don't expect it'll be too eventful. My dad is talking about throwing a barbecue for 4th of July though which is when we might expect Scott and his family to visit again. I hope your holidays were much better than mine and thank you to anyone who is still checking in on me after all this time. I'm okay and on my way to being great. I'm looking forward to my last summer with all my friends before some of them leave the area for college. Hope your summer is full of great memories and experiences. Update 20, 2 year. It's been 2 years since I first posted on here. Surprisingly I still get a few comments and messages per month asking for an update. Can you believe that I, the king of long windedness and oversharing, only posted one update in 2023 prior to this? This year honestly flew by for me. I've been incredibly busy all year but there also hasn't really been anything worth updating about. Everything with my family is and has been good. Any updates would be just mundane regular life stuff. That being said if anyone is curious what my life looks like right now. Well, I've started college. I don't have a major yet as I still don't have a solid idea of what I want to do with my life so I'm just taking gen ed courses right now. Aside from that college is infinitely more fun and freeing than I had even imagined. I thought the pinnacle of freedom here would be being allowed to wear fitted hats which I wasn't allowed to do in high school. It turns out that's just the beginning. All my responsibilities are fully in my own hands now which is exciting and also a little terrifying. While I've allowed myself to take days off a few times I do take school seriously. I'm lucky enough that my grandparents are paying for my tuition and I wouldn't want to spit on their generosity by failing any classes. My grades for my first semester are fantastic though so no worries there. Josh and I did get our roommate request approved so we have our own room. He's doing great and definitely enjoying the newfound freedom much more than I am. Surprising no one he's made a bunch of new friends in our residence hall already. I'm pretty sure half the people on our floor have hung out in our room at some point so far. We ended up both being accepted as new members to my dad's fraternity. Ryan chose not to do it which was surprising because initially he seemed more into it than I was. Joining a fraternity was certainly not something I ever saw myself doing. While I can't get into the specifics of the pledge process I will say that TV and movies had me overly concerned. They make it seem like it's all dehumanizing acts or demands to prove how badly you want to be a part of the club. In my experience it was mostly a bunch of team building and bonding exercises. There was definitely some crappy jobs mixed in but overall it was worth it. One thing the movies did get right though? Those guys know how to throw a party. I'm positive by now that I don't want to end up living in that house next year but I damn sure know the first place to go if I'm bored on a Saturday night. Going back to Ryan, he and I are in a mostly good place still. Although now that I see him almost every day at school I have noticed he's a little bit. I don't want to say possessive because that sounds bad. Maybe protective? Essentially the way that he was towards me with our dad when we first met is how he is with others in regards to me now. 
It feels like he needs everyone to know I'm his brother and I'm closer to him than I am with others. For example one of my new fraternity brothers had a pregnancy scare with his girlfriend. I congratulated him when it was a false alarm, both he and his GF were glad. He jokingly asked me, what, you're not ready to be an uncle yet? And Ryan chimed in saying I wouldn't be an actual uncle until he, Ryan, had a kid. I was extremely embarrassed because it was unnecessary. On top of that he gets annoyed at me over the weirdest things. If I'm being honest I get annoyed at him too. There's stuff that happens that I feel like he should be telling me about but he doesn't. I think even after all this time he and I are still figuring out exactly what the sibling code is. Is there even a code? I assume so but I'm not completely sure. We both grew up as only children but I'm a lot more independent than Ryan. I'm used to doing things on my own and I would have thought he'd be the same. However Ryan is someone who holds his family and friends close to him. That in itself isn't a bad thing, of course. The problem is that I don't think Ryan has found a middle ground yet. He went from someone who would ignore my existence even if I was dying right in front of him to someone who needs to verbally mark his territory. That sounds horrible but that's really how it feels. The vast majority of the time he's completely chill but he just has these moments where it's like he needs to do a validation check for no good reason. My parents are still going strong. Their honeymoon phase has worn off and they do have minor arguments from time to time. That was one of the issues I had with Ryan keeping things from me. Luckily though neither of my parents are yellers so when they argue it's really just an exchange of terse words. As a whole they're doing fantastic. They make each other happy and my dad is not so subtly trying to convince my mom to move in with him. She's holding out though which I'm grateful for. I have no desire to live in my hometown for the rest of my life but that's my childhood home and I'd hate if she sold it. I have no clue what the solution will be if she caves but I'm hoping that even if she does eventually move into my dad's house she'll keep our home. With the holidays fast approaching my parents and I are going to visit my grandma and all my aunts and uncles. The one year anniversary of my grandpa's death is gonna be hard. I'm just glad that my dad can be there for my mom this year. The three of us are gonna be visiting my mom's side of the family from the 20th to the morning of the 24th. On Christmas day we'll pick up Ryan from his mom's house and go to visit my paternal grandparents. It'll be our first Christmas all together and my uncle Scott, his wife, and their daughter will also be there. There really isn't any drama there anymore. I'd if they just chose to go the bygones route but everyone gets along. My dad and uncle talk pretty regularly and my dad doesn't seem to be angry at his parents anymore. Not outwardly anyway. I know my dad still has guilt over the situation with his brother because it creeps out sometimes but I don't expect there to be any issues on Christmas. I'm writing this a couple days early but when I post this it'll be the 18th aka the second anniversary of meeting my dad. It's kinda of funny that we consider this anniversary day. Technically it is the day that we first met but that was a whole shit show so it feels weird to celebrate it. Either way my dad likes to consider it our day so he's treating me to dinner and we're thinking about going to see the new Godzilla movie which I've heard is really good. That's about all for me right now. Hope you all have a happy holiday season if you celebrate anything.